Hello, good evening and welcome to my very first live stream. It's very exciting to be here. It's been a long journey getting here. I have never uh, fiddled with so many settings in audio and visual, even up to the last five minutes. Things were not working. So I'm hoping that uh, you can hear me and that you will be able to hear the game. You can see me. <laughs> and uh, nothing drops out in the middle of the stream, but if it does, then um, you'll just have to bear with me, okay? I feel I might get a free pass just on this one because this is my first ever live stream, so mistakes will be made, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm prepared for them, and I hope they don't bother you too much. Um, so uh, this is me, Captain Mech is my handle, and Sea of Thieves is my game. Um, we're about to jump in to, uh, to the game. I'm uh, sailing on my own. I'm going to be a solo sailor this evening, which is what um, I more often than not I sail on my own in this game. Um, and um, I've got so much to talk to you guys about. Let's just set sail and get into it. And um, hopefully uh, I won't be drowned out by, uh, by all the music and everything in the background. So we're finally here. This is it. Streaming Sea of Thieves. This idea only came to me... Um, Probably about two or three weeks ago. I'd never thought about doing it before. I had, uh, I'd watched some other streamers streaming the game, but uh, it never occurred to me that it, this is something I would do. I didn't know if I had the right equipment for it, a decent enough PC and graphics card and all the other stuff that you need. But hopefully, if you're seeing all of this and you can hear me, that, uh, that tells me that I have got the right stuff. Um, so yeah, so I just suddenly thought, well look, I love playing the game. And quite often I'm obviously talking in my head when I'm playing it about what's going on and what I'm deciding to do. So I thought if I could just get that on camera, it might be entertaining for someone else to watch as well. So this is why uh, this is why I'm here. Um, and I'm going to take take the um, approach of kind of talking about this game as a newbie. I am a newbie, really. I've only been playing this game for about three months and it is now three years old. So I am late to this game. And although I've got the basics, I know what I'm doing, I'm still very much a newbie. There's still an awful lot of stuff I haven't done. So um, I'm going yeah, to be talking through the basics of this game. So if there happen to be any very experienced Sea of Thieves players who, uh, who drop in, then um, this is going to be really basic stuff for you guys. You may get very bored, um, but uh, hopefully I can still make it entertaining. So this is an open world adventure game um, made by Rare, British company. And um, I'm a big fan of Rare. Um, for those of you who are into their video games, um, they started many years ago and um, kind of hit their peak really with uh, GoldenEye 64, Perfect Dark, um, Banjo-Kazooie, all those games in the sort of mid 90s, which is when I was hitting my sort of um, mid teenage years. So me and my friends were all playing Rare games. So uh, I'm quite, quite nostalgic about Rare games. So here we are, guys, whenever you start this game, you start in this very lovely tavern. Um, there's a nice fire to keep you warm. There's various um, uh, interesting looking people. Um, pirates can be a little bit uh, intimidating. But the first thing you want to do is start looking at these barrels because these barrels have got stuff in them. They've got equipment and things and you can take stuff because we haven't got to our ship yet. Um, but this is the kind of wood cannonballs food. This is the kind of things you're going to need lots of on your journey. So this is a good, oh, that's nice. This is a, a good start. So um, lots of different fruit gives you different amounts of energy as you eat it. I tried to skip the bananas because they're the sort of the least, the least interesting. They give you the least amount of energy, cannonballs, wood, etc. So from the dark tavern, let's head out into the beautiful, oh, look at that beautiful summer air. I mean, who needs to go on holiday, right? We're not allowed to go on holiday in lockdown. We can come out here instead and just kind of bask in the glory. I'm just going to uh, um, get my uh, tankard up here. Just raise a toast. I'm going to raise a toast to all of us stuck at home at the moment. Hopefully things are changing. And also to my very first stream. I'm going to say that a lot in this stream. I'm sorry if that gets a bit boring. I'll just have a little drink, but not too much because you can actually get quite drunk easily in this game. So let's head down to my ship. So you can see it's open world, right? So we can go absolutely anywhere we want to. There are various uh, NPCs, non-player characters here um, that can come and uh, uh, ruin our day if they so wish. Skeletons, those sorts of things. But also there are actual real life human players in the game as well. 
and they have their own ships and they can be incredibly friendly or more often than not they can be dastardly pirates because that is the name of the game after all so the most important thing to do in this game is to be scanning the horizon at all times because if you see a ship on the horizon like that you got to keep an eye on it because it could very very quickly come towards you and wreck your ship and steal all your stuff um that could be a skeleton ship so there are skeleton ships as i said that don't have real players on they're just npcs um and there are there are human led ships as well so always be scanning the horizon um these are all the various shops various factions and things you can buy equipment all sorts of stuff so i'm just still grabbing some stuff here so the first thing I'm going to do, ladies and gents, is um, I'm going to make my ship look a bit more exciting. So this ship here that you can see, this is a sloop. This is the smallest ship that you can get in the game, other than a rowing boat. But I mean a proper ship. And um, I really like the sloop. It's for one or two people. No more can sail on this ship. The next one up is a brigantine, which is for uh, one to three people. And then the galleon, which is for four people. So it's a nice. this is a nice little compact ship. Only two cannons. I'm keeping on that ship over there. Yeah, I see you. I see you. We're not going to have a look in a minute. Um, but nice, easy to, to man for, for one person. Um, but we're going to make it... It just doesn't look very exciting. And since this is my first stream, I kind of think we need to have something a bit more exciting. So I'm going to go to uh, this little ship customization chest here. This is... Um, all the various things that I have acquired in game, I started, you get a lot of them uh, anyway, um, but some of them I've bought with money earned within the game, so not with real life money. Um, and none of this stuff will make a difference to the way the ship handles. This doesn't change the ship. All, all it does is change how the ship looks. That's it. That is, this game is all about what you look like, what your guns look like, what your ship look like, but nothing that you get makes you any better than the game. You can't get better guns than other people. Um, so I quite like that too, if I'm honest. So let me tell you around the ship, newbies who are watching this. This is our nice little ship. So I've gone for um, a bit of a, uh, a multicolored theme here since um, since an exciting first stream and I want to, I want to have a bit of color. So we're gonna call this the party boat. Um, we have a nice sail, which is not down yet, but it's got some uh, parrot feathers. I think this is the parrot set. Um, there's all sorts of stuff on the ship, but um, I think, I said, why don't we just go and head over to that ship and just have a look? We can come back for a mission a little bit later, but you know, I kind of, I've built this stream as uh, the friendliest pirate on the seas, which I, I, I do try and be, but you know, it sometimes gets me in trouble because most pirates on the seas don't want to be friendly, right? They want to steal all your stuff. So I get sunk more often than not, if I'm honest. Um, so we're going to raise the anchor. Because we can't go anywhere with that dropped. We are going to drop the sail just a little bit to start off with, just as we pull away from the shore. So you can see, my friends, we are setting sail. We are off. And we're just going to go and have a little look at that ship. I can still see it just there. And maybe we can talk to them. Now, the one thing I did not have time to set up, or at least I didn't get a chance to test, is if other crews come to talk to me, whether you guys are going to be able to hear them on stream. There were various settings, and I, I didn't get a chance to check which one works. So if I do get to speak to someone, you may well just hear me and not them, which will be a bit of a pain, unless they're being particularly abusive and unpleasant, which I hope not. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. So we're off. Let's uh, lower this sail a bit more. Now you can see those little white white stripes there. That is the wind direction. At the moment, the wind is kind of coming across our sails, but it is behind us. So what we can do is just angle our sails until it catches the breeze. So now you know that you are going the fastest that you can. I have already loaded my cannons. We can have a look up here. It's always good if you can to... Uh, Get up to the top and have a look. Have a good view. I'm going to eat some food as well because uh, I took a tiny bit of a tumble, but we're okay. Right, so let's have a look at this. Okay, it could be a player ship. I don't think it's a skelly ship. It could be a player ship. So I'm going to try and be friendly to him. Which, as I said, it generally ends in disaster, right? But it's more entertaining, I'm guessing. I always like to try and be friendly with pirates. Um, sometimes it works. Sometimes you meet some really lovely people. I've met people from all over the world. 
talked about all sorts of lovely things. Okay. He's just parked up at that island. So we're just going to take a little mosey on over. Maybe I won't get too close. I don't want to kind of look threatening. And of course you can meet all sorts of different players. You can meet some very, very experienced players on Sea of Thieves who have been playing it since day one of the, of the alpha. Um, so they've been playing it for three years. They know everything they're doing. They can just wipe the floor with you if they get on board your ship. But you, there are lots of new players as well. Lots of new players and often... You get close to a ship like this one and, and it turns tail and runs because it, you know, it's just trying to def defend itself or get away. Um, so you never entirely know what you're going to uh, come up against. Now obviously there is more to this game than uh, sailing around meeting people. I will be getting into that later on in the stream, but just for now, as a first one, we're just going to go and say hello. You can see the skull in, there, uh, in the sky over there. That is a world event. There are quite a few world events. So things happen in the sky, which which shows you that underneath that, if you sail towards it, there's some big event going on, like a fort that's being raided or a fleet of ghost ships, something like that. Okay. Now, now, of course, the other thing I'm just thinking is because of the audio settings, it could be that I've mucked it up for myself completely and even I'm not going to hear this person if they speak to me. So it could be it could be the shortest conversation in history. So this game features something called proximity chat, which means that if I just speak now, that guy or girl or either over on that ship, they're not going to hear me. But the closer I get to them, if I was on their ship, they can actually hear me speaking, which is quite a nice thing. But if you want to speak to them, and you're too far away, you can use the um, the speaking horn, which is here. Hello! Hello, fellow pirates. I mean no harm. I mean no harm. I'm just swinging by to say hello. I am friendly. Are you friendly? Can you hear me? The other thing often is sometimes people don't have microphones. They're not they're not playing with microphones. Hello, hello. I mean no harm. I'm friendly. I'm friendly. He could be on the island doing some stuff. You never know. In which case he's probably looking at me from the island wondering what on earth I'm doing. I can try chucking out a little bit of a text chat. You can do that as well. Look, so I can do that and then everything okay comes up on the screen. Oh, he sails down. Sails down, so he could be coming after me. I'll try once more. Hello, hello. I'm friendly. I was just saying hello. Can you hear me? Do you have a microphone? If he starts shooting now, we're in trouble. No, oh, okay. It could be he was speaking to me and I couldn't hear him, but he's... Okay, he's not getting involved. He's sailing away. He showed me his backside. Okay, I'm not going to be offended by that. It's fine. I know what we're doing. It's not a problem. All right. So, let's see whereabouts we are. So, there's this big map table down here. This is one of the many things I love about Sea of Thieves. It kind of... it, As much as it is sort of uh, arcadey and cartoony... It's also, um, it kind of tries to add a little bit of realism as well, like the, you know, like the turning of the sails um, to be able to uh, uh, catch the wind. Um, I'm just keeping an eye on that ship just in case he turns, it changes his mind. We're going we're gonna to swing back around here and then I'll show you the map because that's what I was talking about a moment ago. All right. We'll see what's going on. Um, yeah, so so there's no mini map, as you see. There's no mini map on my screen. There's no compass on my screen. I can bring up a compass, which can be very useful to see which way I'm going. Um, but uh, but yeah, so there's no there's no sort of compass on the screen at all times. So you have to kind of look at the the instruments and things that you have. 
And so one of them is the map. This is the map table here. And um, you can actually kind of zoom in on it and uh, move it around like this, which is quite useful. So it's a big old map, the Sea of Thieves. There are different areas like the Ancient Isles um, and down here in the... Um, bottom right I believe we have the Devil's Roar which is full of volcanoes it's a different kind of feel to it we're in the wilds at the moment which is why it's kind of kind of grey it's a little bit um, washed out I know it's kind of night time as well that tends to wash things out um, but yeah so there's lots of different areas lots of different islands to um, discover um, so I think we're going to head back to Ancient Spire Outpost. I can put a little uh, dash, a little circle on my map there so I can kind of see from a distance what way we need to go. If I just kind of get it there so I can see our, my ship and that, it means that hopefully when I'm up here I can just look down at the map and I can kind of get an idea. So we need to head south. So I'm going to bring us round... And then I'm going to introduce you to my pet. I was hoping to have a second pet for this stream this evening, but I didn't manage to get around to it. So, um, ah, now just something I've spotted here. You can see those birds there. When you see great big flocks of birds like that in the sky, um, that means there's a shipwreck underneath it. And in fact, you can just see the top of that ship poking out. So why don't we go and take a look at that? Why not? I can put my sails down now. Just spotted another ship ahead of us. That could be the one that we've already spoken to. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it could be. It could be. Okay. Easy to forget the sails when you're talking on a stream. There we go. But we're almost here anyway, so let's pull them up. And then I'll show you... Uh, yeah, so you can you can have pets in this game. I think they were... People were asking for pets for a very long time and Rare sort of listened and eventually kind of said, yeah, okay, we'll give you pets. So there are pets you can get. You have to buy them with your, uh, your hard-earned cash, your real money. I don't think you can buy them with anything else. Um, it's not too crazy, though. I think it was something like £4.50, something like that. Um... Ah, I, my apologies. There we go. Streamer. First out the gate, first live stream. Completely forget to look at my chat at all. I see there are messages. Thank you, Mega Cheesecake, for joining me. And the Sea Penguin, thank you very much to you. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Yes, Sea Penguin points out that the Skelly ships normally have blue or green lights on them. You're absolutely right. So you can normally tell immediately that they are Skelly ships. Um, and that obviously wasn't because it had the had the plain kind of yellow light. So thank you, Sea Penguin. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, okay, so we are at a um, we're at a uh, uh, a shipwreck now. As I said, always good to check the horizon. So we've still got that ship over there. Who doesn't want to be friends with me? That's okay. That's okay. Um, we're all good elsewhere. So before you sort of leave your ship, it's always a good idea to just have a little look around. All right, so we're going to dive down and see what we can find in this shipwreck. Now, two dangers when you come to shipwrecks in Sea of Thieves. Number one is um, you've got to keep an eye on your oxygen, um, or at least you get an audio cue when you need oxygen. You can hear your character starting to, to choke. Um, and the other thing is sharks. Whenever you're in the water for uh, an amount of time, sharks will spawn, and they will come and try and attack you. So uh, it can sometimes be a little bit tricky. Not much going on in here. There's lots of barrels, of course, where you can get supplies, but in terms of treasure, so so you can hear my character now. He's starting to struggle, so I'm going to always back up to the top just to get a breath of fresh air. So let's hope there's some treasure down on the... Uh, on the bottom deck. Oh, and there's a shark I was telling you about. Excellent. Now, apparently, if you swim right down underneath it, they can't get you. Well, let me see if I can... Uh, go. We can kill ourselves a shark, then maybe we can cook some up, and I can show you the cooking mechanic. There we go. Okay. Dead shark. I'm sorry, shark. You didn't even attack me. I mean, that was, you know... 
You didn't even deserve that. But you know, I had to I had to do it. Okay. All right. So, let's go to the bottom deck now. And uh It's a bit of a weird perspective as you can see when you go in these things. It's it's quite hard. I quite often get stuck on barrels and masts and all kinds of stuff. All right, let's go down here. Let's see what we got. So we got some pomegranates. We got that looks like a chest of some sort at the furthest point. Okay, it is a seafarer's chest, which is um, fairly basic, but you know, look, it's a treasure chest, guys. I'm not, I'm a pirate. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain at this point that the, that the loot is not good enough. Let's get up to the top before I uh, suffocate. All right. Sorry, pirate. So when this game first came out three years ago, I was aware of it, obviously, because I, as I said, I, I'm, I like rare games. I was aware of it coming out, but um, I had heard that it was a um, primarily a multiplayer game. So um, I, I didn't have friends at that point that played Xbox or PC games. So I was, had never done multiplayer games. So I really kind of thought it wasn't for me. So I sort of ignored it. I, I mean, I kind of followed... Uh, ammo chest, ladies and gents. That is how you can uh, get your ammo back after I shot it all into that uh, into that shark. Um, yeah, so you can um, uh, sorry, trying to do a million things at once here. So I never played it, and then um, three months ago uh, they were doing that excellent deal for the Xbox Game Pass, and that's when I saw that. Um, um, see if these was on there. So I thought, great opportunity. So I fired it up. Um, I, I had read that, yes, you can play it solo on your own. It's just a little bit harder to do. Um, and completely fell in love with it. I just, I love it so much. Because it is, you, you can kind of make make it what you will. You know, if, if you want to head out and wreck everyone else's ships and go and do player versus player stuff, get onto their ships and try and fight them, you can do all that stuff. If you want to keep away from that and just do the voyages and the missions the story stuff visit all the islands you can do that most of the time for me it's a pretty chill game as you can see especially when you're in a more beautiful place uh in the wilds can be as i said a bit gray but if you're in some of the um you know the really the really beautiful areas of the map then it, it can be quite stunning um so i'm cooking my shark right now you can cook most food and um it helps you. It's a bit more edible when you cook the meat. Uh, otherwise, you just get sick. If you just eat the raw meat, you don't get a lot of uh, energy or anything from it. But if you cook it, then um, it's pretty good for you. And it gives you a kind of uh, extra buff, a kind of depleting wheel of health that stays with you for a while. So it's a bit better than just eating the normal fruit. So I think that looks kind of done. That's good. We'll keep that. And let me introduce you to my pet, as I said I was going to. This, ladies and gentlemen is Jean Valjean. Those of you who are uh, Les Miserables fans will obviously recognise that name. Um, Jean Valjean is, um, he's a cheeky fella. Um, he likes dancing around, bobbing his head, as you can see. Doesn't help me much on the ship. Um, he kind of flies around and just kind of gets in the way, but it is always nice, especially when you're a solo sleeper. It is nice to have a little digital pet. You can kind of put him anywhere as well. I'll just put him over there. There you go. You stay there, Jean Valjean. All right, so we have a storm coming in. The storms are pretty cool. Um, but we were going to head back to base, pick up a mission of some sort, um, turn this chest in as well, which is going to make me very, very little money indeed. But, you know, it's good to show you uh, all these little things. So I believe I said the... Uh, that's it. Okay, so we are heading south. <laughs> So let's do that. We're going to head south back to Ancient Spire Outpost where we started. And we'll be sailing with the wind as well, which is nice. So that means we'll be a bit quicker. So yeah, so this game for me, as I was saying, is, is really unlike any other game I've played. Um, because because of the nature of it. Because of its so, oh, to sound pretentious, multifaceted, I suppose. Um, but it's just, I find it, it can be very relaxing if you don't get any hassle from anyone. Um, 
and you don't hassle anyone. You can have such a lovely time sailing around, doing the story missions, fishing. There's a whole fishing thing in here which you can do. Um, just visiting islands. It's just, you know, it's an adventure. Okay, I'm going to drop anchor here. Because as you may have seen, there are some barrels floating in the sea with some nice shiny things. So the shiny things are what we're after. That is treasure. Often find them in the sea. It's very easy to go shooting past barrels, especially if you're kind of full full sail, full speed ahead. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to turn the ship around a little bit. Which I will do once I have pulled my anchor cup. So dropping your anchor is a very quick way to stop. It's like a handbrake stop. Um, but then I pull it straight back up again uh, because it means you can kind of swivel the ship on its axis. You won't, you won't go anywhere, but you can kind of swivel around. And I want to get close to that stuff. All right. So you can see also we have a harpoon and a harpoon. Very useful for getting stuff on board the ship. Just fire in and see what you get. So uh, there we have a, uh, a decorative coffer, which is what I've always wanted. Love that. Now we need to check there are no gunpowder kegs because I could easily set one off if I harpoon it at a certain uh, angle, I believe. So you have to be very careful. Crate of exotic silks. Bung that on there as well. What else we got? We got some other blue shiny thing somewhere I saw. Where's the blue shiny thing? There it is. I could go, I could bring the barrels aboard um, and then just kind of see what, what's in them, supplies and things. Um, but I'm not going to bother at the moment. Because I'm alright for supplies. I'm not planning to do any crazy stuff. Okay, in a minute I'm just going to jump in and get it because there we go, thank you. It's taking a bit too long there. Sapphire Mermaid Gem. Nice. I'm going to bung that down here. Okay, well that's an extra little bonus. Let's set sail again. So the anchor is already up. <laughs> yes, uh, Cheesecake. The monkey, the monkey is a good pet. I have, a pr I have problems with monkey pets. Um, I know one in particular who is called Oppenheimer who occasionally boards my ship and um, his owner is very fond of him and thinks he is he's quite innocent um, but I believe otherwise I think Oppenheimer the monkey is out to sabotage the ship there have been times when I've seen him removing cannonballs from the cannons I once caught him trying to sneak a gunpowder keg on board the ship none of that's true by the way pets can't do that but I like to think that's what he's doing um, so yeah and monkeys I'm not sure about and I also I have a problem with monkey pets in this game because of um, yeah well done Captain Mech going in, in the right direction there you can all see my navigation skills are absolutely superb south south Captain Mech south is where you want to go let's just keep an eye um, ever since watching His Dark Materials the BBC HBO two seasons which I really really enjoyed I'd read the books um, and uh, yeah really enjoyed the series thought they did it really well but for those who know the stories or have seen the series you will know that uh, Mrs Coulter her demon her animal companion is a monkey a golden type of monkey I'm not good on my monkey types sorry if uh, that's not what they're called but um so, so her monkey is scary and evil, as is she. And so, whenever I see this particular monkey I'm talking about, Oppenheimer, I get I get bad vibes, bad vibes about the monkey. So, I'm not going to be getting myself a monkey. I will leave that to my friend and Oppenheimer. Um, I may get myself a cat. That may be my next pet. I like Jean Valjean. I'll make him do a little dance for you, uh, ladies and gents. Hold on. Jean Valjean, could you do a little dance for me if I play you this? You ready? You stop cleaning yourself. Oi, here we go. There we go. Excellent, Jean Valjean. You could break into song. You can do a little sing? No. I think he can eat... Does he eat my food if I give him my food? I think he does. Hold on, what can I give him? Give me a banana. Jean Valjean, do you want a banana? Oh, yep, he ate that. That's gone. Yes, we have no bananas. Are we still heading south? We are. Okay. I'm not looking at the horizon. Too busy uh, playing with the parakeets. 
Is that another shipwreck? There's another shipwreck there. Okay. Let's head on over there. I mean, we're heading back with loot anyway. There's no point not to do it. So you can see how, um, and my wife will tell you this, <laughs> how this game can be quite a time sink. And often you can start a session uh, with a great plan of what you're going to do. We're going to do a tall tale, which is one of the, the long sort of story missions. We're going to do this. We're going to do some merchant alliance cargo runs. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Within 10 minutes, all the plans gone wrong um, because a skelly ship has attacked you or another player ship has attacked you or you've seen some some uh, shipwrecks along the way and you've stopped and then you pick up something else which can only be handed in over there and then, you know, the whole thing is scuppered. So you can do a whole session of, of just mucking about, really, and not, not getting an awful lot done. But it's as long as you're enjoying it, that's what it's all about, right? This is all good. Um... Okay, so, again, let's just have a little horizon check. It's so much more important to do this when you are a solo slooper. It is, I, I think it's the most important thing in the game. Keep an eye on that one. Um, because a ship can come up on you so quickly without noticing. You know, you, you just have blind spots and suddenly there it is. Um, and if you don't get in the first shot, then sometimes you're, you're kind of sunk before you know it. So really important. Obviously, if, if you're in a brig or you're on the galleon, you've got more people. So one one person could be lookout all the time. But as a sl uh, sloop sailor, you are doing everything. You are uh, you're doing the sails, the anchor, you're patching the ship if it gets holes, all that kind of stuff. Just keeping an eye, chaps, because what I don't want to do is dive down into this shipwreck now and leave my ship unattended because he might just turn and come and get me. I'm not in the middle of my thing. Right, there we go. Got to keep in the centre. You know, got to keep up production values. So the other excellent thing you can do is fire yourself out of cannons. Not just cannonballs, but yourself, which is a great way to cover distances and get onto islands and things. Okay, so he is... Right, let's go up. Let's just have a little double check. Can't be too careful. Not when you're a solo sleeper. I missed that. I missed that. I'll cut all this bit out. <laughs> One of the hardest things I find is actually navigating around the ship. I'm not kidding. I get stuck on stairs and barrels and I'm just kind of pushing into various bits of furniture and I can't move. It's dreadful. It's a good job I'm not trying to be a live streamer, right? Because that stuff would look awful if anyone was watching. I think he's just having a look, right? He's just sailing slowly by. Hmm... Seeing what we're doing. Oh, while we're up here, unless I've already done it, you can put, you have very, yeah, okay, so you have various flags you can put up. These ones here, none of them mean anything necessarily. They can mean what you want them to mean. Obviously, I suppose gull and, gull and crossbones is fairly obvious that um, you might be aggressive, you might be looking for trouble. But on this screen here, this is an alliance flag, offer alliance. So if you are flying this flag, which I am, and another ship comes, comes nearby and, um, they fly their alliance flag, then they join your alliance, which means that you two are in a sort of team. Now, this can all go horribly wrong, and you can read all sorts of horror stories uh, online about alliances that go wrong because people can trick you. But basically what it means, if an alliance goes right, it means that, for instance, if me and this sloop in the distance that I'm watching, if we formed an alliance, all the treasure that I turned in, I'd get the full amount of treasure, but they would get, I think it's 50% of what I turn in. So they get 50% of my hard work. Likewise, if they turn treasure in, I get 50%. So, you know, if you're doing a lot of um, a lot of looting in a session and you're in alliance, it can be a really handy way to rack up the money. Um, but it can be used to backstab people as well, so you do have to be careful. I've never actually managed to get into an alliance. No, I tell a lie, I got into one. There was a brig that was just turning in a load of stuff 
They swung by me and my friend and said, are you new? We said, yes. And they said, raise your alliance flag, alliance with us, because we're just about to turn in all this loot. And uh, it's nothing to us, but you guys will, will benefit. And we did. We got a, a ton of money. So that was great. So they can work out really well. And the money in this game, the gold, there it is. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep it. Yeah, it's quite. The gold in this game is all about cosmetics, as I said before. Um, so it's ship cosmetics. Um, it is weapons cosmetics. If you go into here, you can see the different cosmetics that I have. Again, newbie, not very many at the moment. So various types of swords, none of them do anything different. Yeah, they just look different. So it's all about cosmetics, not about buying better weapons to make yourselves better than other people. Um, you can carry two weapons on you at all times. A gun, and there are three types of guns. This, a blunderbuss, and an eye of reach, which is a sniper. The blunderbuss is kind of a shotgun. And you can carry a sword. Or some people like to carry two guns, but essentially you have sort of two spaces for weapons. I think generally most people go for gun and sword, but people have all kinds of uh, all kinds of preferences. Right, I'm going to stop watching that ship because he's just kind of sailing around and let's go down and see what we can find. I'm still working out what weapons I'm best with. I think the pistol for me is the best all rounder. The range is pretty good on the pistol. You can shoot stuff from quite far away. The accuracy is really good as well, but it's still pretty uh, pretty powerful close up. Um, the blunderbuss is is your shotgun, right? So if you if you're uh, close up and personal with someone, that if you're, you're if you are close enough to them, that is a one shot kill. Great to use if you're boarding other ships. Okay, we have a skull in here. Nice. Hello, my friend. I hope you didn't die. Too much of a painful death. So the blunderbuss is the shotgun. Um, and then the Eye of Reach is the sniper rifle. They each do slightly different amounts of damage to another player or a, a shark or whatever. Um, and they each play slightly differently, so it's really a case of finding the sort of weapon combination that you like. And do you like sheep fighting with swords or not? Most people do, um, because swords don't run out of ammunition, right? You haven't got to keep reloading. Um, but swords are tricky things. It's, yeah... I've been in many sword battles. I don't know that I've won many of them. You'll get to you'll you'll get to know me. I dropped it in the water. Excellent. Wonder what that was floating out there. Oh, there's another one floated up. No, no, you just dropped the first one. Great. Okay, beginner's guide. Don't drop your treasure in the water before you've got on there. There's a shark. Okay. All right, shark. You just stay there. You just slowly circle me and I will slowly kill you to death. Down, 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 down. If you get underneath it and they're coming towards you, they can't get you, apparently. This is what I've read. If they're coming straight towards you, they're the same level as you, dive down. They can't really dive down. I, real sharks can. Obviously, these aren't real sharks. Okay. All right. Skull, skull, skull. So, yeah, weapons. Have a play around with them all and see what you like to use. Get into some fights with other people. See what you want to do, yeah. I mean, I'm as I say, I'm still, I'm still kind of making my mind up to be honest. But I think, I mean, the sword, the sword has a lot going for it, um, because as it doesn't run out of ammo, and you're a bit more um, maneuverable with the sword. Um, you can hop around, you could jump, you can block other swords people as well. Um, you can do lunges and stuff. You can so you can hold block like this, and you can do. Um, you can do sort of little bunny hops either side. You can do big old lunges towards people like this, which does quite a lot of damage. So, you know, there's pros and cons for all. Um, I don't think there is a set set way. Some people love to double gun, and that's, that's you know, that's fair enough. Okay, let's put this down here. Out of sight, at least. I'll bung it there. So all these treasures I'm finding, by the way, these we these need to be turned into different um, shops, if you like, or merchants at the outpost. So you get the same merchants at every outpost, um, but uh, certain treasures go to certain ones. And we will do that in just a second. Have I got any wood on me at the moment? Yes, I have. Cannonballs. Okay. Various barrels around the ship. Uh, so I am just going to get rid of some of my blunder bombs and load up with some fire bombs. 
These can all be quite useful for sort of when you're in hand-to-hand -hand combat and things. Um, okay. Let's get going again. Uh, we're still heading south. That's good. Anchor is not dropped. Alright, let's look at the map from up here. Check we're going the right way. We're absolutely not because we're next to it. So we want to head west. West. Again, people, you can see how much easier this is with a crew of people. Someone looking at the map. Someone doing the sails. Someone doing this. Someone doing that. But I just often prefer doing stuff on my own. No offence to the crew that I sometimes play with. I really like doing that stuff as well because it shows you how much easier it is with a crew. But I'm, uh, yeah, I do like, I do prefer being in charge of my own ship and doing my own thing. Probably because I'm an only child. That, uh, that says a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't want to share my ship with anyone. It's my ship. All right. Don't let me forget the shark, okay? The shark is going to burn if I do not go and check it. I'll go and check it now. Shark looks good. I'm taking the shark. All right. Never had so much shark. So, where is our outpost? Uh, is that one there? That's the one. That's where we started. Right at the tavern. So, when coming into an outpost, I tend to kind of go half sails because these outposts, they creep up on you very quickly. My goodness, the times I've crashed into them. They were in the distance, I swear. And then whack straight into the dock. So I tend to go half sails and it's often a good idea as well. You know, eyes in the sky and all. A little scan round just to make sure there are no. Hello, barrels. Oh, but what? What the? Oh, I'm gonna leave that for now. Okay. Um. Yeah. Just have a scan. Scan round. Make sure there are no ships docked there already. Um. Because if you approach them and they're docked there, then they probably will shoot you. Okay. So it's looking good. Sometimes it's worth going all the way round the island. Like, for instance. Don't fall off your ship. This is another thing that I'm very, very good at. Falling off my ship. The first time I did this, I was terrified because, look, that's not a nice sight, yeah? I'm in the sea and my ship is sailing away. My ship is sailing towards the outpost. I can't control my ship. It's probably going to smash into the outpost. It's not fun. Don't fall off your ship. <sighs> Luckily, there is a mechanic to... Uh, uh, to get you back, which is a mermaid, should spawn. And you can then use them to get back to the ship. But do they spawn when you want them to? No, they do not. Do they spawn where you want them to? No, they do not. They spawn all the way over there. So I have to swim and swim and swim. To get back on my ship. So yeah, falling off the ship. Also something I'm very good at. It's really not good to do it as a solo sleeper either, because that means your ship is unascended. I wish I could tie a rope to my ship. So I don't actually fall off. So we'll have to see. Sometimes on this loading screen, you can hear what's happening to your ship before you can get back in and play. So sometimes you hear your ship sinking or you hear your ship smashing it into stuff. And it's aggravating. It's very annoying. And because I'm playing on Xbox One rather than PC, as you can see, the loading times can sometimes be a bit ridiculous. My ship is still heading towards the outpost now. Still going there. Okay. Luckily, it went past the outpost. So we're okay. I don't know what I was panicking about. Everyone just calm down. Just calm down, everyone. It's okay. So don't fall off your ship. There was a lesson for you. Rare, when they designed this game, have, have said openly... Mm, player ship, I think. That they, um, they had great fun des designing... A lot of the stuff um, because they've put in various things on the horizon that look like ships to send the fear of God into you. Um, the classic one is towers, um, little gun turret towers at the forts, which are the kind of fortified islands that have skeletons on them sometimes. Um, 
those towers they look they're designed to look like ships from a distance so it re you know until you get used to them you, it is quite quite a shock when you see them also there's certain trees there's certain rocks in the island um or in the sea should i say that uh that look like ships so um they've done it they did a very good job really all right so we're just going to slowly come around here So this is the outpost we started at. All outposts are different. I mean, they have the same merchants in them, uh, same same sort of factions, if you like, and they all have a tavern. Um, but uh, some of them look, you know, they all look very different. They're nice, nice different designs. Okay, so we're gonna try and stop at this jetty here. I'm gonna pull the sails all the way up, which means I don't I don't stop. I'm just gonna kind of glide slowly in can't always get it exact the other thing to do is just bomb straight past it but but at the moment you're next to it drop your anchor you do a great big stop the whole ship lurches but you've stopped in the right place but then what you, what you want to do is raise your anchor straight away put your sails up raise your anchor so that you are ready to go at a moment's notice you haven't got to hoist that anchor up again if suddenly you see a ship on the horizon so i'm just going to angle my ship out to sea here i'm gonna you see the the gold top on top of the top of this bit of the handle there's only one of those right so that that shows you that's the middle one so get that there and you know that your ship is centered essentially so it's not going to start turning on its axis as it can do okay one more little scan always worth it Cool. Okay, so sails up, anchor is up, so I'm ready to go if I need to quickly. Okay, let's unload some treasure. Seafarer's chests. Most treasure chests go to the gold hoarders. The gold hoarders are one of the factions, one of the traders in Sea of Thieves. And from these traders, you can also buy missions and voyages, which I'll do in a moment. So you would come over here and generally they are always in tents rather than rather than these these um, uh, structures here. A tent on the beach. They're surrounded by gold. They are also cursed. I've read the um, the Sea of Thieves novel, Athena's Fortune, I think it was called. Really nice, actually. Really nice novel. Well written. I enjoyed it a lot. And um, yeah, so there's a lot of backstory there, but um, the gold hoarders have curses. Um, and certain parts of their body, like you can see in the middle of his chest there, are actually starting to turn to gold because they're too greedy. So I will sell that chest. And let's look in the right hand side. You'll see 253 gold pieces for that little seafarer's chest, which is, is not very much at all. But it's better than nothing, right? I mean, if you do a great big fort or, a, you know, like a world event, competent crews they're bringing in hundreds of thousands you know so 253 doesn't quite cut it but it was easy work this is early days right early days okay crate of exotic silks this is quite nice i've actually got a treasure for each of the main factions so that's that's quite useful for uh, beginner newbie purposes okay so silks goods like this go to the merchant alliance they are always on the pier um they also have a little chalkboard talking about um you know uh, fruits and commodities and value and stuff like that sell that to the merchant alliance your senior trainer mildred they often have really great voices as well they have quite nice voice actors i'm an actor myself i love accents especially and voices so i'm always interested to hear now i did read somewhere someone correct me if i'm wrong that all the um, merchant traders are actually voiced by members of staff at Rare. I don't know if that's true, but it'd be great if it was. Let's see what... I can't remember what Mildred sounds like. How nice to see you. Oh, isn't she lovely? Hmm. <laughs> take care, dear. Thank you, Mildred. I will take care. Very kind of you to, uh, to think of me. Okay, um, last one. You see how it's quite annoying? I didn't get close enough to the dock, so I'm basically having to jump every time. Or swim in the sea, which is annoying, but there we go. Oh yeah, we have this as well. Decorative coffer. So that is going to be um, gold hoarders again. Lots of nice fish. I'll show you how to catch those a little bit later on. We'll do a bit of fishing. 
cook them up and sell them to the hunter's call. The hunter's call is another type of trader or merchant, but they do not have a um, a little base on the outpost. So they have sea posts, which are tiny little islands elsewhere. I'll show you one of those. There we go. Herbert, let's see what he sounds like. He's not saying much at the moment. Chests. Get. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you. Chests. Get. I mean, it's a simple enough instruction, right? I know what I'm supposed to do. Okay. Run, 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 run. Jump, miss, swim, bath around, climb. Okay, now we are going to get the Disgraced Bounty Skull. So the Order of Souls in the game are a faction that um, they buy skulls from dead pirates or undead pirates um, and they basically extract memories out of them essentially memories where of where the pirates buried their treasure which they then use themselves or i think they might then sell that information to the gold hoarders because the gold hoarders often sell you maps to treasure i think they sometimes work together i can't really remember but yeah so so this is madame olwen let's see what she sounds like Warm welcome, friend. very very mysterious this is also where you buy your missions. All this stuff I'm doing here when you get into this screen, this is where you buy the voyages. I will. There you go. I'm just checking the emissary table here. I'll explain the emissary tables in a moment. Okay. Run, 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 run. Always be checking. Always be checking. Glengarry, Glen Ross. That was closing, but this is always be checking. All right. Last one. It is our sparkly mermaid gem, I believe. There it is. Okay. I like mermaid gems because they're worth a lot more than um, some of the other stuff. I think they're around about a thousand gold, sometimes up to two thousand, depending on the type of gem. You get different coloured ones, maybe different coloured ones have different values. I don't know. I can't remember. But this is also going to go to the gold hoarders. Uh, to Herbert, just um, over here. Old chest git man. Here he is. There you go. So you can get voyages from these these people. Um, and uh, in fact, I'll just I'll show you now. I'll buy one from uh, from Herbert. Let's see. Let's grab one of these um, gold hoarders. So there is a vault. There is a loot stolen. Okay, let's do this vault one because that might be quite interesting. So I'm going to buy this. That goes into my inventory, and then we um, we will activate it from on the ship, which I'll do in a moment. More gold, More gold Herbert. All right, he's impatient. I've just bought a thing from you. Blimey. All right. Next to every trader, there is this table. This is the emissary table. This is where you can vote to raise the emissary flag. So basically, we are doing a gold hoarder's mission in a moment. That's fine. That's all it is. But if we want to do a little bit more, if we want to represent the trading company, fly their flag... We can raise an emissary flag. I'll do that now. You can see now there's a little tiny wooden boat on this table. That represents us. We have raised the emissary flag. So what this means is we now represent the gold hoarders. Um, you can see there, what wasn't there before, there is now a gold hoarders emissary flag on the back of my ship. And also up here, the top one there is the emissary flag. You can see it's got one blue stripe on it. And down here one section of a circle under the key that means i'm at grade one emissary which means i've just started i haven't done anything else yet we want to build that grade up we will build that grade up by doing various things um, but what emissary basically means is that the more you do the higher your grade goes um, and then you will start to earn more money you start to earn a multiplier for the treasure that you turn in for the gold hoarders so it's really worth doing um, you also get money back when you hand your flag in at the end of the session um so well worth doing you get more stuff however there is another faction on the sea of thieves called the reapers and one of the things they like to do is steal emissary flags they will sink, sink my ship and steal that flag because that flag to them is worth a lot more than it is to me it actually has a, a money value attached to it at the moment not much because i'm only grade one 
But if they were to wait until I was grade five and then steal that flag and sell it, they would make a lot of money from it. So reapers are really your, your main enemy when you are sailing as an emissary on the seas. Now we can see emissaries, uh, sorry, reapers on, on our map, on that on my ship. I'll show you in a bit. If there are any reapers around, they are on my map. I can see them. I can also see them from their emissary table, which I'll show you. This is Merchant Alliance, no emissaries. This is a good way of um, seeing what you're up against. When you first load into a server, you can kind of see who's doing what, you know, see what emissaries there are. If there were three gold hoarder emissaries, maybe you should be one too, because then the likelihood of them trying to sink you is, is low. They're not going to sink their own emissaries because it will go against them. So that might make sense. See this? This is my friend here. Yeah, this is this is the Reapers. OK, this is the Reapers emissary table. And lo and behold, there is one ship here. So there is a Reapers emissary out there on the ocean somewhere, and they are going to want my flag. As I said, not at the moment. It's kind of worthless to them. But once uh, once I've got the grade up a bit, they are going to want that flag. So now that we know there is a Reaper on the Sea of Thieves somewhere, we can immediately go and see where they are on my map. So let's check it out. Okay, so this is as far out as I can zoom. I can zoom in further. So you start to get the island names. But this is as far out that as I can go. But bang. There we go. So this is a Reaper. He is grade one. You can see by that one little uh, line there. That's who I have to be wary of. Now, I believe, again, remember I'm a noob, people. So you can curse me all you want uh, if I start getting these things wrong. And you can tell me very politely in the chat as well. Feel free. Anyone feel free to, to send me something in the chat. I will happily uh, happily respond to you. Always nice to know people are there. Um, I believe that when the Reapers get to grade five, they then have the ability to see all the other emissaries on the map. I believe that's the case. So if, if this one's at grade five, it could see me on the map and it would then come and get me, I assume. So um, I, have, I need to keep an eye on him. He's still at the moment. If he comes over, then um, yeah, there could be trouble. We'll see what happens. So we have a voyage to do. OK, let's propose quest. We go into voyages. We go into the voyage that we did. It is on the table. Now, this is a weird thing. Even though I'm the only one on my ship, I'm solo sleeping. I still have to vote for my quest. So I'm going to do that. I've shoved a knife down. I'm going to vote, vote for my quest. The treacherous vault locked by the tricky loot, please, Roberts. OK, I have done vaults before. Once, I think. I can't remember. There's like medallions and keys and stuff to find. It's all quite Indiana Jones. It's good fun. I like it. Um, thank you. Quest received. Now, I should probably be sensible and just... Um, Golden Wayfinder. That's right. I remember. So this is a special compass that I've now been given to help me find my way on this quest that we've done. Um, I'm just going to... Uh, load up if I can. I should have emptied some of this stuff on my ship before trying to load up because I can't carry everything all at once. <laughs> That'll do. All right. So the party boat is ready. We have one Reaper on the ocean. All right. OK. So quite often you get given a map of an island you're supposed to be going to for the gold hoarders. Um, but for the vault quests, you do not, I believe. All you are given is this. This beautiful looking thing. Let me light a lamp and so you can actually see it. So this is a golden wayfinder. And um, you can see that it is kind of pointing slowly to the left of me. But that is the direction we have to sail. So this is going to lead us to an island. Um, and... Um, so let's go. You can see I've turned lamps off. A lot of people recommend turning lamps off because apparently it makes you easier to see from a distance. It kind of lights you up. And you can still kind of see your way around on the ship. So, you know, it's not it's not really debilitating to, um, to uh, turn your lanterns off. It's a beautiful moonlit night tonight. Let's take a look at this Wayfinder.
Alright. Well, it's kind of going this direction. So, but we don't want to head straight into this island. Unless, of course, it is taking us to this island. That would be amazing because we'd be very close indeed. So that swirly thing in the sky there, I believe, that is a reaper's chest. So it's a special type of treasure chest that can be worth quite a lot of money. And that is basically telling you that it is sat there ready to take. Um, and once you get it, you have to take it to the reaper's hideout. They are the only people who will buy it. So, I mean, I could do that. Even though I'm flying the uh, gold hoarder's emissary, I can, I can still pick up a reaper's chest and go and sell it to the reapers. But uh, I think I will probably leave it for the time being. They're normally on shipwrecks. Okay, let's check out this. Okay, so it's kind of actually over towards that Reaper's chest at the moment. Well, let's head on over there. Greetings to anyone who has joined us. To anyone who is viewing at the moment. Thank you for sticking with me. Welcome to the party boat. There's not much of a party going on at the moment. It's all dark and you can't really see anything. But hey, we've got some whirlwind lights in the sky. I mean, what more can I offer you? So that reaper's chest also should be marked on the map. Yeah, okay. So there's the reaper's chest. You can see it just there. But it's also near the reapers. Oh. The reapers have disappeared. Now, unless they have learned how to... Um, cloak themselves. I assume that means they've just logged off or they've hopped servers or something. Quite often they will hop servers. They'll go onto a different server to see, you know, if there are more ships there. Um, so, well, hopefully we don't have to worry about them anymore. But, um, we'll see. Wayfinder. Okay. We want to go slightly to the right. Could be that island over there. Let's go and have a look. So one of the things that inspired me to start streaming was obviously watching other streamers. Um, I had never watched other streamers on anything until three months ago. When I first started playing Sea of Thieves, I um, was so bad at the, uh, the player versus player part of it, which we, a lot of people are. It is a common problem. People get very flustered. People get very panicked. I am one of them. Before I know what's happened, it's like, someone's, someone's on my boat. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. Okay. I'm dead. I'm going to respawn back on the boat. I've respawned back on the boat. Oh, they've killed me again. I didn't even see him. It's a, like a storm of swords. George R. R. Martin reference there for you. Um, and then you're dead. So I started looking at, at streamers that were really, really good at it. Um, and kind of thought, wow, no, this is really interesting. Because yes, all right, it, it, re it helps if you're really good at the game you're playing for streaming. Of course it does. That's why a lot of people are going to watch you. Um, because they want to get good at the game. But um, just so much about the personality as well. And there are some really, really funny people streaming that make it really entertaining. You know, they'll stream for seven or eight hours um, and they will still make it entertaining. Um, so, yeah, so I started watching. So um, particular ones that I was really enjoying. Um, Beardageddon was, was one of my favourites. I still watch him quite a lot. Insanely good at the game. So entertaining. Just very funny. Has a laugh with it at all times. Such good content he he creates. Um, Fuzzy Bond was another one. He's I watched his watched his videos more than I don't know why that little message is cut off there. Okay, um, watch his videos more than his um, cannon fire from the right. So when it's from an island like this, ladies and gents, it is more often than not skeletons. It's not usually a player doing that. You'd probably see their ship. Yeah, skeletons will often shoot cannons at you. They're normally quite a good shot as well. I think we're okay at the moment. Leave me alone, Skelly. Yeah. I'll come back for you later. Um, yeah, Fuzzy Bond. So I was watching his videos more. Um, he has a really kind of nice, calm delivery. Don't... Right. You're in trouble, Skelly. I'm I'm coming to get you. I've got your name. I'm marking it in my little book. I'm coming back. Beware. Be scared. Yeah, it hit my ship. Okay. So we need to go and we need to just check this out. 
All right, people. This is what happens when you get cannonballed. This is one hole, which is really nothing. We're good. The sloop takes quite a long time to sink. So the first thing we want to do is grab wood and we're going to repair. Nice and easy at the moment because no one else is shooting at us. Imagine if you had 10 holes here and two ships firing cannons at you at all times. It can get pretty hectic down here. Next thing, we have water. We need to bail. Let's get rid of this water. Let's also look at where we're going. There is a sea post coming up. I do not want to hit it. So while I'm bailing, I'm just going to slow us down a bit. All right. Let's get back to bailing. Bailing, bailing, bailing. Okay. So there's not much to bail, actually. We're nearly good. Out here. Do this. So minor, a minor inconvenience. But as I said, imagine, imagine the other situation where it's all going. You're, you're rinsing through your planks of wood because you're, you're uh, patching up so many holes. You've got more holes happening. Um, you've got uh, ships shooting at you. It can get very, very crazy. So you have to be careful. This is a sea post I was talking about earlier. That is a sea post, also designed to look like a ship, helpfully. But that is where you can uh, go to the hunter's call and you can sell uh, meat and fish and stuff that you've got. I could sell my shark there, but we, uh, we're trying to do a mission, right? Oh, it's right there. Oh, all right, I'll sell the shark. No, I'll eat the shark. I'm going to keep the shark. All right. Um, wayfinder, wayfinder, wayfinder. Okay. Okay. Over there somewhere. Still heading towards that Reaper chest, isn't it? Let me check the map. Okay, fine. I'm just going to head towards the Reaper chest for now. Um, so Fuzzy Bond, yeah. Lots of uh, very methodical videos about the guns and about PvP and all that kind of stuff. Um... So I did enjoy his videos and his streams. Check those out. Blurbs, another one. Watch his stream. He does really good videos. Really short, very sort of um, methodical kind of dead. He has quite a deadpan delivery, which I really like. I find it quite soothing. I don't. I haven't seen him kind of get animated and excited very much. Um, maybe I haven't watched too much of his streams, but that's not criticism. He's 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 really calm talks you through stuff and he does some great videos about Sea of Thieves and trying to get better at PM PvP and boarding other people's ships um, because it's a really hard thing. The fantastic thing about Blurbs is he's so um, hot on his audio. He, is, he, he will play a little battle to you on, on his stream, on his videos that he's just been involved, a fight that you know was over in 20 seconds. He'll then go back and he'll pick it apart piece by piece, by piece and he will tell you his decisions, uh, why why he did what he did at every step of that fight. Um, and it's often to do with the sound cues that he's getting. Stuff that I did not hear. Like I don't hear it the first time I watch his videos and then I'm like straining with my ears to try and hear it. Um, but it's stuff like, um, you know, he'll be running and he's saying, oh, can you hear, they, they, there's a resurrection sound. So one, one crew member is trying to resurrect the other. That's just started. So I know that I can lunge out of this room and hit them both. Um, I, they've just switched from their sword to their gun or they've just reloaded or they haven't got any bullets left or there are footsteps over there. I've heard a ladder splash. So there are lots and lots of sound cues in this game. OK, I, this, I feel like I'm going, literally going around in circles here. I must be getting close, but I'm heading in the wrong it, There's a ship over there. And it's a galleon, which um, I ain't getting tangled with a galleon. No way. Unless they're friendly. Hey, I'm the friendliest pirate on the seas. Uh, okay. It could be a skelly galleon, actually. I think I saw some green lanterns there. Did you see those? Yeah, I think it's a skelly galleon. Yeah, it's a skelly. Okay, so skelly, skelly ships you can usually tell because um, as uh, Sea Penguin very kindly pointed out in my chat, they normally have different coloured uh, lights, green and blues, rather than the standard colour. So that often marks them out. Can you also see how the ship looks rickety? It looks like it's built from like old broken planks of wood and the sails are kind of torn and ragged. That's kind of, they're all the giveaway. Generally speaking, 
we don't have to worry about that ship. They are not going to sail over here and try and get us. Um, they generally don't aggro you unless you get very, very close to them or shoot on them first. So I'm not going to be worried too much. Nice of you up here, though. This is nice. Does this need music? I think this needs music. Okay. Let's see what we've got. Nice. You can you can play different songs as well. Oh yes, you can. You can press B for shanty. See, and then you can get let's play let's, all kinds of kind. Let's play uh, let's play Happy Birthday because it's the first live stream that I'm doing. That doesn't work. It's not an anniversary, is it? It's my birthday as a streamer. Whatever, just play it. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Captain Mac. Happy birthday to me. Oh, that was nice and really self-indulgent. I apologise. This bell doesn't do much other than that. I don't really know what it's for. People can hear it a long way away, though. Okay, back to the mission. See, oh, so easy to get waylaid. Sorry, everyone. So, those were the streamers. Beardageddon, Fuzzy, Blurbs, and I also recently discovered Behaving Beardly. It seems a lot, a lot. Beards and Pirates, right? They go together. Behaving Beardly, very funny, uses voice mods to change his voice and then manages to hide on people's ships and then kind of does the voice of God and some hilarious stuff. I've barely been able to watch his his things, but um, yeah, definitely worth a look if you're interested. Very, very funny stuff. Right. So it's now behind me. Okay, so it could be that tiny little island over there. There's a rock there. Don't hit the rock, Captain Mech. There's rocks and ships. Ain't best friends. Let's go. New approach. 87. Hello. Thank you very much for joining me. Pleasure to have you. I am not getting a lot done, but I feel I've been lucky so far because as I'm taking a kind of beginner's approach at this whole stream and, like, you know, introducing people to this game who maybe haven't played it before. There's some barrels there. A lot of stuff has happened. As in, you know, finding different types of treasure, going, having to go to an outpost. I've seen another sloop. I've seen a couple of shipwrecks. Just various things that have been quite useful for pointing out beginner's things. You stay where you are, Mr. Galleon. Don't you be coming close to me, because if you are, then I warn you, I'm going to run away. Stay... All right, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Where's Jean Valjean? Are you still sat there, Jean Valjean? Come somewhere else. Be entertaining for the viewers. Come on. Where can we go? Where can we put you? Let's, uh, can we put you on the... Can we put you on the capstan? Are you gonna... No, you're not going to go on there. All right, can I put you on this? Oh, no. I'll put you on... Here. There. Right, stay there. Okay. Do the voyage, do the voyage. It's going to become my catchphrase. No, it's not that one. It's that one. Okay, this is good, chaps. I feel good. All right, I think it's that little titchy island. Yeah, okay. Let's get some speed. We're going pretty slowly at the moment. I sometimes don't put my sails all the way down. I know I don't get as much speed by doing this, but sometimes I find that it just gets in the way, especially if it's wavy like this, you know? It, it starts to clip the horizon and it gets... If it's foggy or something and you've got rocks coming at you, you do you just you need to be able to see where you're going, right? So um So that's what I tend to do. Okay. Well, let's head over here. Let's put the sail up a little bit so we can kind of glide in, hopefully. Not too hot. Let's check the way thunder. Yeah, it's gotta be it. It's gotta be it. All right, quick scan, quick scan. Beautiful day. Visibility is good. Skelly ship over there. This is a Titchy Island. It's a little one. You can see we've got barrels are on most islands, so they're a great place to resupply as you are uh, travelling around. So um, what I'll do is I'll just I'll bring us in a little bit closer. I'm going to put these sails up to almost full. You often get skeletons um, spawning on these islands as well. So let's put it all the way up. 
that by the way over there you can see that that is a fort remember I was talking earlier in the stream about how the um, the gun turrets were designed to look like ships well there you go there's an example they still get me every time so there's going to be supplies on this island which I'm going to grab. So there is no point in me fill going onto the island with my pockets already filled, right? So I'm going to empty them. Cannons, throwables, get rid. Food, I'm going to risk it and take none because there will be some in the barrels on the island. So let's get rid of those. Again, this is, I was talking about earlier, this is just, just the absolute basics, but navigating your ship quickly. You know, I still haven't quite got it. I can get up to the wheel quite quickly like that. I just about manage it. That's not bad. But other times, you know, you start get you get stuck on stuff and you're around here and then there's something coming up these stairs that always gets me like there. It's it just takes practice, but it and it seems like the most piffly thing, you know. What do you mean you need to practice walking around your ship? But it really can me mean the difference with your ship sinking or not. If you're in the middle of a battle and you have got to bail or you've got to restock your cannonballs and you've got stuck on a stair you know it's not going to do you any good it's ridiculous so uh yes that's something that I, I still try to do i still like you know going and checking them up I'm, I'm now sort of jumping and turning and going there rather than going down the stairs um back to the wheel i'm okay at getting up the crow's nest you could do a jump and then jump and catch that so it kind of skips out the bottom part of the ladder that's quite a useful thing to do quick 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 it's all about the speed, moving around the ship quickly. Getting down. Okay, so you hurt yourself if you jump, right? You'll take a bit of damage. You may even start getting a sprint, um, a sprint, beg your pardon, a limp, um, because you can do that if you fall from height. So it's not advisable to jump off unless you're jumping into the water. That's fine. But if you want to get down quick, I've just tried to sort of gauge now how high up I can be before jumping and not hurting myself. That hurt myself. Right, okay. So that was a little bit too high. <laughs> Maybe a few steps down from that would be fine. Um, but uh, yes, so it, all about uh, navigating your ship quickly. A very, very useful thing. Um, I'm getting rid of my planks. So I'm going on empty. Um, what kind of gun do we want? Okay, as I said before, I fa stay there, galleon. It's fine. They often get very, very close. They look like they're going to attack, but they don't. Famous last words. I don't know why I took my sword out then. I can't fight a galleon with a sword. Too far away. Um, I said that I... Yes, I said that I favour a pistol. I have no bullets. Let's reload. It's from killing that shark earlier. I favour a pistol just because it's kind of got the best of both worlds. It's still got a decent amount of reach. Um, but also it's quite powerful. The blunderbuss I just don't get on with. Yes, Mr Skelly. If I shot him now, all hell would break loose, which would be fun. But I would end up sinking and it would just take longer to do what I'm doing. This is, this is the trouble with this game, you see. Blunderbuss, it is, they, you know, they're fun. They're very, very good for defending your ship. Because these, these, these guys are a one-shot, one-shot kill if you're close enough, right? If you're, if you're as close as that, bang, it's like a shotgun. They are dead. It's, it's the only gun that, that can shoot, that can kill uh, a fellow pirate in one shot um but you can see the reload time is quite look at the reload time that's a long time to reload if you're running around a ship and you've got people chasing you so the load time is uh, is quite um uh long and also the um the spread of the uh the pellets you know if you're slightly too far away only some of them are going to catch the pirate um and so it's going to do less damage you know there's no guarantee of a one-shot kill unless you're nice and close so Great for close-up combat on a ship, or if you're trying to defend your ladders, right? When people are coming up, this is this is how they're going to get on your ship. So good for that kind of stuff. But I I just struggle with the blunderbuss. I don't know why. It's not my weapon of choice generally. Um, and the other one, is, of course, is the other gun is the Eye of Reach, which is the. Look, you can see how much I use the Eye of Reach. I haven't even got any other cosmetics for it. It is that one bottom right with no other shiny stuff. It is just that's the only. The only look, the 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 bog standard sailor eye of reach. So the sailor, the eye of reach is your is your sniper rifle. Okay, I love that you get a broken glass, a glass crack for the sight. I think that's very clever. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, so that's your sniper rifle. Again, obviously great for you know 
sniping people, but um, generally I don't really do much long long stuff. And then I find if, I, if I'm carrying a sniper rifle, I will immediately be in the position of needing um, some other gun. So I generally don't use a sniper rifle. It is good for fighting in the water, though, if you fall into the water with other um, pirates. Look at that. That is a galleon. That is what I'm aspiring to. One day, one day I'll have a big crew and we'll go sailing around on a galleon. But that day is not today. So let's go on the island. I'm going to get rid of this gun because I don't want it. Go back to my trusty pistol. What is that? The accomplished parrot cutlass. I don't know what makes you accomplished as a parrot. Um, but uh, our new approach is telling me to take it on. Sorry, new approach. This is one of the things I'm getting used to is looking at my chat because that's completely new to me. So, you know, I'll go 20 minutes and I don't look at it. I'm really sorry. I can take the galleon on if you want me to. Hey, we, we can go and do that. Accomplished parrot cutlass. I'm going to have that. Yep, and we'll, and we'll back to Sea Dog Pistol. Uh, we'll have that. Right. Let's see where that galleon went. We can take it on. It'll be good. It'll be good. Good practice for me. Um, I will end up thinking. I imagine. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it's it's right there. Um, but it'll show you uh, show you newbies out there some uh, some combat. All right, so we need that. Chain shots don't work on skelly ships. Chain shots take down the mast. Um, let's take that and uh, just take that anyway. Okay, let's do it. These are already. John. Hey, Rorschach. Thank you very much for joining you. Very pleased to see you. Rorschach, um, Rorschach is a good friend of mine. I'm a, a, a big D&D &D player, Dungeons and Dragons. For those of you that know me, that has kind of been my thing for quite some time. Rorschach is a character in one of my D&D &D games that I run, but uh, he is also uh, a real person behind the name as well. And Rorschach has... Um, Something of a seafaring background, or the, the man behind Rorschach. So this could be interesting for you, Rorschach. You might like this kind of stuff. You'd probably be better at this game than I am. You know the front end of a ship from the back. So you know exactly what you're doing. Okay, so we're going to take on this skelly galleon just for the fun of it. I, you know, I emptied all my pockets to go on the island. Yeah, so that means I've got nothing on me. I've got no food. i got an out. What am I thinking? Okay, all right, and quick, need some wood. Quick, 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 okay. Back up the top. All right, so the Skelly Galleon is NPC, so these are not real players. These are, you know, generated uh, players. Um, but they can still cause me a problem. I'm only a single sloop, you know, so I, I haven't got a lot of uh, a lot of firepower. They will have... Oh, tell me in the chat, guys, how many cannons on the Galleon in this game? I don't know, is it eight? I think four on either side, something like that. Okay, let's get on with it. Let's see if I can actually hit it with my incredible uh, cannonic skills. Okay, come on, skellies. Okay, you can hear the music cues. Every time you hit it, you get a little music cue. That was way over the top, but that was fine. I was aiming for the other side of the ship because, uh, you know, that's um, there could have been other people out there. So how dare they fire back at me? Who would have thought it? Who would have thought it? Okay. Let's get back on here. Okay, they're coming right at us. I'm going to I'm going to throw some stuff at them just to cause them some problems. There we go. Have some fire, gents. It probably won't do much, but it's still fun, right? There we go. I can see some skellies there. Let's see if I can put some blunder bombs on them. That might blow some of the Oh, there you go. Got rid of those skellies. Nice. Oh, there's the captain up there. There's the captain. Right, come on. Come on, I'm losing my opportunities here to shoot this thing. Here's a, here's a pro tr uh, streamer tip for you, ladies and gents. Don't look at your chat. Ouch. Don't look at your chat while you're aiming cannonballs. I mean, my aim's not good anyway. But um, if you do that, you're not going to hit him, right? So let's just... Uh, let's just Get on it. Get out. Okay, that was a cursed cannonball. See the green one? I don't know what it did. I'm not looking at the moment. I'm just trying to shoot these guys. Come on. Come on. 
Need to get a bit lower in the water. Don't run out of cannibals pretty soon. Come on. Okay. There we go. So, first mistake. Wasn't really looking after my own ship. I was just... Thinking about hitting the... Okay. See what happens? See what happens? New approach. I know we're new friends and everything, but, you know, I'm going to have to blame you for this one. I wouldn't have sunk had I not listened to you. No, in all seriousness. Classic. I can't even get out of my ship. I know where I am. I'm stuck in my ship and it's sinking. Get out, get out, get out. It's some, some kind of horror film. It's like Saw. Ah. Oh. New approach, please don't feel bad. It was my uh, terrible ship management skills. It was nothing to do with you. So there we go. That was my perfect example of uh, how to get sunk very, very easily. My emissary status is lost. Of course it has. Oh, there's a kraken. Can everyone see that tentacle? That's a kraken. Yeah, that's kind of one of the biggest uh, problems in this game. There's my emissary flag. That's my emissary flag there. There's no point in me picking it up. I can't really take it anywhere. It's not worth anything. Well, let's just... <laughs> I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to use my mermaid and get the heck out. Whoa, whoa. Okay, what? Oh, I'm, I'm getting eaten by a kraken. New approach. I take it back what I said. This is your fault. Ha... ha <laughs> is this good content I hope so because I'm dying <laughs> I've lost my ship I'm now swimming with a kraken how do you, how do you I don't know do you shoot a kraken do you just shoot it ok you can still shoot it with your gun you don't need to be on a ship to shoot a kraken right no it couldn't have gone any worse I'm now you know two bullets left all right I've got I've got that again so hopefully I will now be okay I will now be able to just zoom out of here and get onto a new ship dearie me so what I was trying to say there's a trip for a uh, tip for you just keep an eye on your ship as a solo sleeper take take pauses go down check see if you need to patch holes see if you need to bail water all the time you have to kind of do a sort of running loop of the ship Keep the firepower up on the uh, on the galleon or ship, whoever you're fighting. Um, but <laughs> but uh, keep doing that. I didn't. I was just trying to shoot it because new approach in the chat. I don't know if you've seen them, but they were egging me on, basically. Um, so I was trying to please them. So um, so that was fun, though. That was cool. But we've lost the emissary status. That doesn't matter. We should still have the... Um, I should still have the voyage. I should still have the wayfinder. So hopefully we can just actually get on and do that. Absolutely, Raw Shark. One eye, yeah, yeah. One eye to the ship, one to yourself. Yeah, I know. You tell me that now. Too late. At least I get a brand new ship. Brand new ship now on a nice quiet island away from any trouble. What time we got? So we're an hour and a half into the stream. It is flying by and um, it's been really fun so far. The challenge of talking and playing a game is much harder than I was expecting. Much, much harder. My wife will tell me that if we are driving together in the car and I am, I'm driving and I'm telling her a story of some sort, I slow the car down. Not intentionally, but I, I sort of forget to accelerate a lot. And so and we're sort of starting to slow down sort of 40, 30 miles an hour and, and my wife says... You, can you get a move on? And it's purely because I'm concentrating on the story, I forget what I'm actually supposed to be doing. That sounds more dangerous than it is. I'm not crashing cars or anything. Um, but uh, so there we go. So I'm obviously not I'm not particularly good at doing stuff and um, uh, talking at the same time as we've just seen. But it's fun, right? Okay. So have we still got... Have we still got a quest? We've still got a quest. We've still got the Wayfinder. Okay, the party boat has done its done its piece. I think we need to do something else. 
We need to go something else in the ship uh, ship customization chest. So we're going to go up here into the ship customization. Let's see what we've got. Wild Rose is a particular one of my favourites. This was actually really nice. So I'm going to go for Wild Rose. Wild Rose sails. Have I got? I haven't really got set of everything for any of the ships yet. Do I have a Wild Rose wheel? No, I don't. I have an Admiral. I have Aristocrat wheel. That looks okay. We'll have that. Um, cannons, I don't have anything else. I think I've got a Wild Rose capstan, though. We have a Wild Rose capstan. I will have that as well. Thank you. Uh, Rorschach, this is Jean Valjean. This is my parakeet. Um, he's a very valued member of my crew. Didn't do anything against the galleon, though, did he? Did you see that? I didn't see him anywhere. Kraken, was he there? No. There he is, laughing at me. Is that the island we need to go to? It probably is, isn't it? Right. Okay, let's go. So, let's actually do something. Sails down. Raw Shark, this one is for you. Splice the main brace. Cheers. We're not going anywhere because I haven't raised the anchor. That was entirely intentional, everyone. That's why we're not going anywhere, even though we have a full sail. I knew, I knew I hadn't raised the anchor, the wild rose anchor. Cheers, cheesecake. Thanks for staying with me, buddy. Raw Shark, if you don't know, Mega Cheesecake in the chat is uh, Luther. You may knew that, you probably did know that actually, but I just thought I should tell you. Can you see how my screen's gone wavy? It's because I got drunk. Now, there is law to this, ladies and gents. There is quite a lot of law in this game. As I said, I've read the novel uh, Athena's Fortune, which was lovely and kind of sets it all out. And there are some graphic novels as well. But basically, um, this is a um, area of the sea. Some people think it's near Bermuda, although it's never specified in the book. But I think in one of the first maps that was put out as part of the artwork for the game, there was something on a map, like a real map, that suggested it was near Bermuda. But basically it is an area of sea that is surrounded by a shroud, the Devil's Shroud, which you can see if you sail off the map, you hit red fog and mist and stuff and your ship starts to disintegrate. And within the Devil's Shroud is this idyllic kind of pirate world with these beautiful islands and outposts and things going on. And magic and health life all works slightly differently within the shroud this is mentioned in the book so that is why for instance you can eat a banana i probably don't have one coconut shark you can eat any of these fruits and you kind of you heal you know you'll heal a broken leg it's, it's a game thing right you, you you eat stuff in a game and you heal it's always been a bit silly but it's actually mentioned in the book that is why you can jump slightly further in this game than perhaps in real life if you if you do a sword lunge or something this is why you can hold your breath for a lot longer in this game than in real life everything works slightly differently within the devil's shroud uh, and you can also come back from the dead within the devil's shroud which is why when i die have i died yet i haven't died yet have i in this session which is why um yeah when you die you you and you go on the ferry of the damned which you will see at some point and um, you, then you will spawn back on your ship. So it's not just because you're playing a game. It's, it's because you're in the Devil's Shroud. There is this element of uh, of coming back from the dead. So there's some nice, nice stuff. I like the fact that it is all um, kind of recognised. And as I said, it's written about in the book. The book is very... Um... Yes, Raw Shark. <laughs> it is like an ocean-based Barovia. Absolutely. Uh, for those of you that don't play Dungeons & Dragons, Barovia is the setting for one of the most famous Dungeons & Dragon adventures ever, Ravenloft. Um, and very much so, yeah, Barovia is an area surrounded by mists and everything works slightly differently. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the novel itself is quite family friendly. There's no real violence, um, no, uh, you know swearing or sort of adult themes or anything it's it's a very much just kind of pg-13 uh rating but it's not to detract you know it's a really nice fun pirate adventure story split over two timelines timelines so oh there's there's some skellies hold on 
Let me just deal with these. Okay, so these are... Whoop, he's got a gun. Don't shoot me! Come on, you. Why are you taking longer than normal? Um, yeah, so the book is set over two different timelines. The first first timeline is the the um, Captain uh, Ramsey, if I can remember his name, the, the one who discovered the Sea of Thieves. He was the first one here. Um, or at least first human. There were, there were other mermaids and natives and stuff around the place um, as well. Um, and then the other timeline is from, from a... a female pirate who's been here for a long time and, and, and uh, you know, it's kind of in the future from when Ramsey first finds it. But yeah, definitely well worth the read. It was really nice. Really good fun. So um, I've just stopped here. It could be the Wayfinder Island that we're trying to do this voyage on. I don't know. Hold on. Let's uh, let's get that up here. Yeah, this is the island. Okay. At last. But also uh, I was just getting those nice shiny gems as well. Let's see if I can pick them up with a harpoon. Just swing the ship around a bit without hitting the island. I'm really good at this game. Um, aspects of this game, all all the bits that, that cause problems. I'm really good at hitting islands. I'm really good at damaging myself. Um, all these things that are very useful with games. I'm good at all that stuff. I'm quite good at catching fish. That's not too difficult once you get the hang of it. I had a whole fishing festival a few weeks ago, um, Sea of Thieves, as part of one of the seasons that they were doing, where you had to catch certain fish in certain areas with certain baits, and then you get various rewards. That was really fun, you know. That was a nice little, um, a nice little exercise to do, because you know you weren't fighting, you weren't getting any aggro, you were just um, sailing around, stopping at a nice little island, and then doing a bit of fishing. And it was really cool. No, no. There's a bit of a delay on this lunge. That's why it looks like I'm pausing and not doing anything. You, you do that and then you wait and then it lunges in, which does a nice lot of damage. But there is a kind of time delay. So it looks like I'm just kind of staring at the staring down the barrel of the gun. <laughs> OK, so. Treasures aboard ship now. Let's... Um... Okay. If you don't have any bullets in your gun, it doesn't work. That's another pro tip for you, ladies and gents. God, you're learning so much from me this evening. So, so much. I don't need to do this. I just, you know, I'm just mucking around really. I just like shooting things off ships. All right, so. Stop faffing around. And do the flipping quest, Captain Mech. Okay, so I just heard a skeleton spawn. They're pretty loud when they spawn, so I'm just going to... Uh... Get out of it, skellies. Out. Out. Is that all of them? One over there, he's not having none of it. Funny looking ones over there. We're all good. Okay. Um, come on, right. Okay. So this thing is going to lead me to where I need to dig. See how it's getting crazy? And then when I'm in the right spot, it will just start spinning around wildly. Not there yet. Oh, there's a rowboat. That's useful. I'll show you those in a minute. See, all this stuff is just presenting me. Here, okay. It's presenting me to, to show you. It's just really useful. It's like it's like rare know that I'm doing my first ever stream. Oi, don't get frosty, you. I don't know if it's just me, but these skellies, they seem a bit... It's just to take a few more hits than normal. It could just be me. But yeah. No. Get out. Okay, so this is Captain. This is a Captain. So he's a bit tougher, this guy. If you can keep up the pressure, normally you should be okay. He will often back off and start um, drinking potions and things to uh, to help him. There you go. And because he, he's a captain, he will drop some stuff. So we have ooh, we have his skeleton's orders, which is a voyage, a mission. 
I'll take it. I won't necessarily do it. Um, they've just started dropping gold. This is a new thing for season two. We're in season two of Sea of Thieves. They've only started doing seasons in inverted commas this year. And we're in season two. They never used to drop gold. They now drop gold. Let's pick that up. See how much we get. 201 gold. There's a skelly with a keg. I was just about to have a drink, but I need to make a run for it. Run. Okay, let's blow him up. Boom. Kegs are really dangerous, as you can see. They can wreck your ship. Um, and wreck you if you're anywhere near them. So, uh, yeah, so do be careful with those. You can also have a lot of fun by storing them on other people's ships and dropping them places. And, I mean, they are great fun. I kind of feel like for a future stream... I'm going to you know, write this down. So I need ideas for future streams, right? We're going to have a keg stream. I haven't mucked around with them much, but I feel like we need to. I'm going to drop that there. Come back to that in a second. Oh, this is Skelly Island tonight. Oh, would you? Do you not know that I'm trying to do a thing? Go away. Don't eat your bananas. Jean Valjean. See? He causes problems because I think he's a skeleton running around. And it's just him. Alright. Quest. Go. Where was it? It was in these was it in these bushes somewhere. No, it was just uh it was over here, wasn't it? Oh yeah. Mm. I need to eat. I'm nearly dead. Shark! Okay. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. No, I don't need a bucket. I need the quest thing. Okay. Dig with your shovel. Now, do it before anything else happens. But not there, because that's the wrong place. Yes. <laughs> I read a brilliant thing online the other day, talking about newbie mistakes. So I don't know if you heard that. When I hit this bottle, you get a, you get a dull thud, which is the same for if you've got um, treasure chests. You get a dull thud to, to tell you're in the right place. <laughs> there was a guy saying that when he first started playing and he got the dull thud, he thought it just he thought it just meant that he'd hit stone. Like there's nothing down there. So, so he was never finding any treasure. Because he'd go to dig stuff up and he was just getting dull thuds all the time. And was just not, you know, it was just getting, it was just stone. He's like, where's all the treasure in this game? I can't find anything. Bless him. Alright, what we got? Get off me! Don't. Don't go there, Jean Valjean. Don't get in my way. Okay, wait. Whoa! God, I'd be happy to leave this island. Ah, move, 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 move. What am I doing? Honestly. This crazy amount of skeletons. All right. <sighs> okay, so we've got the torn map parchment. We've got a skull, and I'm going to take you to the rowboat. I can show you the rowboat, guys. Try not to get too excited there. I know this is really what you've joined the stream to see. So, we can put that there. Rowboats can be found all over the place. They can be attached to your ship. They have a little um, box here, a little rowboat chest, which we can open. And we can see on the right-hand side that it's full of nice, tasty treats. I can't pick any of it up at the moment because my pockets are full. Um, but uh, it, it, you know, it'll be good. We can stick with that. So, no, the galleon does not seem so bad. New approach. <laughs> no, not compared to Crazy Skelly Island. All right. So we use oars. Now, obviously, as is standard, you look out the back of... Whoop. Go away. Go away. No, other way. You look out the back of the rowboat, which is really hard to steer it. So, luckily, uh, Rare have decided that you can just turn all the way around and look out the front, which is a lot easier. 
Um, and I am starting to get that. Yeah, okay. So you need to do the special. There's a there's a, like a braking button and a rowing button for the different oars. So if you get them in the right way, you can turn around nice and sharply. And then if you get the, the rhythm right, you can get nice speed up. There we go. So we're going to attach this to the back of our ship. Okay, let's just come around here and we should get a prompt. Once you get near the back of the ship, you should get a prompt um, that then enables you to hook on like that. All right, so that only took forever. But the ship hasn't sunk, so that's good. We haven't been uh, attacked by anyone, so that's also good. We haven't had anyone try to speak to us yet. We haven't met any other players, which is always fun, um, but it doesn't happen that often. Um, new players get griefed a lot in this game. There's there's so many forums about new players kind of trying to do their thing like I'm doing now and getting absolutely rinsed by people coming and killing them and sinking their ship and then tracking them down. I have been lucky. That's n happened once or twice. And you can just sink your own ship and, and spawn on a new one. So, you know, there's always a way to get out of it. Um, but um, it is a problem for a lot of people. I have been lucky. I'm pretty vigilant, generally, when I'm not trying to talk on a stream. <laughs> um, eyes to the horizon at all times. So I don't normally get let other ships get the drop on me. And maybe that's what it is. But I normally have a fairly peaceful time, to be honest. Um, but griefing toxic stuff you know it is a problem in this game as as with any other multiplayer game but it's really tough for for new players that start and they do that and, and they have that sort of experience to begin with it's an you know people just just go well i'm not playing it anymore you know they try it once or twice they get griefed and sunk and they kind of think that's what the game is and then they give up uh, and so I think the game in some areas has a bit of a reputation. I read a lot of players that want to get their friends on board to play it, but their friends won't play it because they're like, well, we're just going to get we're just going to get hounded. You know, it's just we're going to get abuse thrown at us and stuff, which is, as you can see, at least for me, generally not a problem. There's always ways you can kind of get away from griefers and stuff. So, you know, it's OK. Um, we are looking at our quest now. So we had the Wayfinder, which is in the top there. But now that we've got the message in a bottle, we've now got this. Oh, let's have a look. Press the wrong button there. OK, so it's a segment of a map. You can see there are one, two, three, there are four other, sorry, three other pieces that we need to find to complete the map. Once that happens, on, on one of those segments, there will be a cross to show where the key is to the vault or whatever the heck is we're doing. I can't even remember. Um, sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes the cross is on this first bit of the map. And if, if there is enough of that island for you to recognise it, you can go there and be on your way and you can you can get the thing done. Unfortunately for us, no, I would be able to recognise that island if I then compare it to the big map I've got on my ship um, down below decks. If I if I went here, you know, and you can, this is your spot, and you can start kind of zooming in and looking at the various islands. You get to know them as well the more you play. So I could find it, but I don't know where the treasure is because there's no X on there. Is there? No. Okay. So I need to find another treasure piece, map piece, should I say, another map piece. So that's what we're going to do. It's dark out here. Okay, so for this, we need the Wayfinder again, and we're going to go to the next place. Thanks, Raw Shark. Pleasure to have you. Appreciate it. Have fun. Um, okay, so... Uh, we want the Wayfinder, don't we? see roughly what direction we want to go in basically behind us let's turn these lanterns off just so we're not uh, a big old beacon well as far as streaming goes tonight I'm very happy I'm, I'm happy that you can see me and I'm happy that you can hear me and I'm happy that chat works I mean I can't actually ask for anything more can I That is all good. Content-wise, um, lots of little bits and pieces being done, which is fun. 
I'm not so worried about what we're doing. I just just like to be able to kind of show you guys stuff. Uh, okay, some more over to our left. Let's drop these cells properly. Come on. Let's get it done. Let's head more over here. It could be that island there. You never know. So Raw Shark in the uh, in the chat um, was mentioning D and D earlier, which uh, for those of you who know me, yeah, I'm a big D and D player, um, and I think in all honesty, that's probably one of the things that attracted me to playing this game as well, because there are, there are a lot of similarities: the adventure, the fantasy, the magic, the um, the vaults, the skeletons. It's all very Dungeons and Dragons. So I mean, it, it, it's kind of obvious, really. That's why I was sort of drawn to it: the stories and the characters. Yeah, I reckon it might be on this island. Is this... Oh, is this Thieves' Haven? If this is Thieves' Haven, this is a great island. I love it. I think it's my favourite. Oh, it's going to tell me now, isn't it? Thieves' Haven. This is in the book, right? This is the first island that they they go to when they first find the Sea of Thieves. Um, and it's just such a great island because it has this huge arch. We'll, we'll go in there. You have to be quite careful. But it's just a really good place to hide your ship. It does leave you kind of vulnerable, though, because um, there are three separate archways into the centre of the island. So once you're in there, obviously, ships could kind of circle and, and cannon fire you while you're there. Um, so, you know, risk and reward. But it's just, just such a nice place to visit. Because this is like a travel game, right? This is uh, pretty much you going around visiting islands and stuff. It's cool. Um yeah, so so the D and D thing is is you know is is why I really like it, and the irony is as well is that before I got into this game, pirates pirates were fun, you know, but I wasn't a crazy fan. I, you know, I, I hadn't watched all the Pirates of the Caribbean movies excessively. Um, I didn't read pirate books. I wasn't watching Black Sails on TV or anything like that. Um, I could sort of take or leave pirates, um, and then my D and D group. Um, I gave them a char uh, choice of what adventure we were going to play next. Uh, and they went for Ghosts of Saltmarsh, which is a recently published kind of anthology of little adventures, really. Um, but it's all pirate themed. So fine. Yeah, we can do pirate theme. That's great. So we're right in the thick of... Okay. Is that a skelly or another player? It's a pesky skelly. Now I'm going to crash because I jumped off the ship in shock. Meant to do that, meant to do that. It's all good. Meant to do it, meant to do it. It's all fine. Right, I'm going to get that skelly though. How dare he. I've just come to visit this island. I'm a tourist. It's like... Getting to Rome on your holidays and someone shoots you with a cannon. It's not the nicest welcome, is it? Up, 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 up. Um, yeah, so go to Saltmarsh, a uh, pirate themed D&D game, and then I suddenly discovered Sea of Thieves, and so my entire life has now got very, very piratey. Um, I am re-watching the Pirates of the Caribbean films, because they're such good fun, although, you know, they get less good as time goes on, such is the way. Oh, seriously? I'm a skelly magnet today. Oh, yeah, but there's another one hiding in the bushes. Why wouldn't there be? And there we go. My first death of the session. Hello, Charlie B. Thank you for joining, my friend. I'm dead. How's that for a, for a, a start? Um, okay, so when you die, you can be resurrected by your, by your fellow players. But I have no fellow players, so I'm going to the Ferry of the Damned. Which is a, a little holding area for when, you, uh, when you're when you dead. So yeah, so um, I'm trying to finish my D&D &D story. So yes, yeah, so suddenly, because I'm doing a D&D &D pirate themed adventure, Ghosts of Saltmarsh, um, and now I'm doing this, yes, my life has got very, very piratey. I don't want this note now. That should be at the beginning of the game, not now. Um, 
very piratey. So I'm re-watching Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm reading some um, pirate novels. It's all good fun. I'm liking it. Notes received 12. What am I, a postman or something? There you go. I can take this flame. So you can take you, you can take different coloured flames from this, this well of fates, depending on how you die in game. So if you get killed, for instance, by fire, I believe, you can come here, hold up your lantern, and you can take uh, your lantern will become red. And there are different colours for different things. Um, so I'm assuming this is a skelly, a skelly death. They killed me, so I can now take this green lantern. Um, this is a cool ship. Can you see how it's kind of all in pieces? This is like the ghost ship, the ferry of the damned. The mast is not even together. It's a very cool place. You don't want to hang out here too often. Oh, let's go and say hello to our mate on the helm here. There we go. So this is the uh, this is the ferryman. I think you can talk to him. Let's talk to him. Let's just say a quick hello. What do you want from me? I am just passing through. That's all. And I want to know why I've got 12 notes in my inventory. My inventory is not that big and my pockets are heavy. I don't want 12 notes. Okay. He's not that talkative. That's fine. All right. I'm off. You don't want me to be here anymore. So there we go through this door and we go back onto my ship, which is probably crashed, sunk. I did crash into the dock, didn't I? I did. <laughs> Charlie B. The motion sickness, it really does. It does. Yeah. If you play a long evening session. Yeah, I notice yeah, I'll go like, into my kitchen and then uh, it's kind of, you know, waving around a bit. Not properly, though. I can still play. It doesn't affect me that much, but. Okay. Ah, so I've not spawned back on my ship in Thieves Haven because it's sunk. That's fine. Cheesecake, you will absolutely appreciate what is happening happening to me here. This is the this is the story of Sea of Thieves. So often you try to do something, three hours later you ain't done it. All right, let's head back on here. So I've got an idea for a stream, chaps. I've written it down, keg stream, right? So I'm going to do a whole stream, I think, and I'm just going to muck around with kegs. That's it. That's going to be the whole stream. I may have to think about it more than that, you know, but keg stream is good. Um, there's lots of stuff I want to do on this stream going forward because there's loads of stuff in Sea of Thieves that I've never tried because um, I'm a bit too scared. I'll hold my hands up and admit that. Um... Things like the forts. I have tried a fort with uh, Mega Cheesecake. He did most of the work, to be honest. I stayed on the ship and shot a few cannibals, but he kind of cleared everything and then opened the vault and then we got trounced upon by another ship. Um, yeah, I know, Kraken Cheesecake. There was a crack that was just for you on my first stream. That's not bad, is it? Not bad. Um, uh, I don't know, Charlie B. He's asking about alerts um, for, for me going live. I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, Cheesecake, did you get an alert saying that I went live at the beginning? Let me know. I'm not sure. I, I'll have to check that. Um, so, yeah, so I want to... Yeah, so, so the other thing... So I haven't done a fort. I haven't done properly done the, um, the Captain Flameheart world event where there's ghost ships where you can pick up a lot of really good loot. I haven't done that. I haven't done the new Fort of the Damned because this is all fighty, 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 which is something I'm not very good at. But as all experienced Sea of Thieves players say, in fact, probably all FPS players, you know, you're not going to get, you're not going to get any good at PvP stuff unless you go and do it. I'm very good at running away and avoiding conflict and generally having a nice chill game. But that means that the actual PvP combat I've done in this game is very, very little. And so because it's very little, I'm cack at it. And I don't last five minutes. And so when you're getting constantly killed, you just, you kind of tense up and you go like, I'm not enjoying this. I don't want to do PvP. I'm no good at it. So I don't do it. And a lot of the forms and stuff that I, uh, that I read about Sea of Thieves kind of says, you know what, if you suck at PvP, you have to kind of bite the bullet, no pun intended, and go and do a session which is just PvP. Get on your ship. Don't do any voyages. Get on your ship and just go and find other ships. Try and sink them. Board their ship. Try and kill the people. They say it may be against your principles, what you enjoy in a game, but it's the only way you're going to get better. So that, I'm going to have to do it. 
So that is going to be another stream. Why just go and try and kill people? Hey, that'd be fun for a laugh. But uh, what would be good though? What would be good is, is to get to get some viewers watching who um, who are good at the game, right? They're good at PvP, and then it's like a reverse stream. They're not watching me to get better. Don't watch me to get better, guys. I can tell you the basics, like how to turn the wheel and move the sails. I'm really good at that. Anything else, not so much. Um, but hopefully, yeah, so people people won't watch me to get better, but they can watch me to help me get better. I can be PvPing and they can be in the chat going, mate, watch your ladders, do this, do that. Try not to do this so much. You know, you're not prioritising, blah, 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 blah. That would be really interesting. It would be quite an intense stream, I think, to be reading chat, taking tips, trying to get better. But um, that would be fun. So a PvP stream at some point might be quite good. I'm going to give that a go. I'll do a world event at some point. A world event stream. I've got a couple of buddies who play. Cheesecake in the chats being one of them. So maybe once I'm a bit more into... It's not a Thieves Haven anymore, is it? Because it's pointing the other way. Unless that isn't Thieves Haven. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got a couple of other buddies who play. We play on a brigantine. So maybe once I've got into the streaming hang of things, then we can do uh, we can do something together as well. So I'll actually have a crew, which would be good. Which one is these Haven? Where is these Haven? Where is Peace Haven? It's to my left. My left there. This is the mysterious missing island. I can't see it. Ugh, can't even get it. It is that one. Okay, but it's saying it's not on Thieves Island. Thieves Haven anymore. Ugh. Would you just tell me where to go, for goodness sake? <laughs> so, I've got lots of ideas for the stream coming up. I'm really excited about it. It's a really fun thing to do because I'm, you know, as I said at the beginning of this stream, I'm playing the game that I like, um, and I'm also I'm also chatting about it. I'm talking. You know me. I like talking anyway. I'm an actor by trade, so I, I I really enjoy entertaining people. So it's kind of all come together in a in a nice package. Um, my friend Charlie B in the chat there helped me. He is a streamer. He was there way before me. I've watched his stream. It was really fun. So check him out, Charlie B17. He plays a um, an Assassin's Creed game. Charlie B, remind me what it's called because it's not it's not an obvious one, is it? It's one of the sort of offshoot side ones, but it's kind of cool. I'd never really seen anything quite like it, and and he's obviously very good at it and knows what he's uh, knows what he's doing in it. So it was, it was really nice to kind of watch him play and watch him kind of talk through what was going on. Um, but he he's helped me massively. I had a couple of phone calls with him. He helped me kind of get to know what equipment I'd need for setting up a stream. You know, you need more than you think you do, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, uh, so that was fun. So uh, thank you, Charlie B. You have helped a lot. And uh, as first streams go, it's going all right so far. It's going all right. And we're two hours in. I can't believe it. Two hours in, and I'm now blinking closer to fin finishing this stupid voyage. Stupid game. No, not really. I'm only kidding. Things just take time. World event for you there. See that ship in the sky? Something's going on all the way over there. Some kind of ghost fleet. Who knows? That'll be for another stream. I think I'll just do world events. I'll just do what's in the sky. That would be cool. And not actually do any voyages, because the voyages, you know, they can take a while. Okay, so it's the little Titchy Island. I have still got the um, original piece of map, haven't I? Yes, I have. I was about to get very cross then if I hadn't got that. Thank you, New Approach. Pleasure to have you here. Take care. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Very kind. Okay. Jean Valjean. Could you please go and could you go onto the island and actually find this bit of uh, treasure map for me? That would be good, and then I can stay here. Would you do that for me? I know what you're thinking. You think I'm going to crash into Ireland? Well, I'm not. 
because I'm going to pull these sails up. This is what I do. I pull the sails up, glide slowly in, like really cool, then realise I pulled the sails up too early, and then stop too far away from the island, and then have the embarrassing choice of either running and jumping, running and jumping and swimming to get on the island, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, or going back to the sails and lowering it to move slightly further forward and then putting it back up again before you crash into the island. These are the problems you have to face in Sea of Thieves. That'll do. Um, okay, how much food have I got? Yeah, we're all good. Fine. Let's just go and do something. I can see a treasure chest over there. Treasure chests often are found on the shores of islands, so it's always worth just going round and seeing if you can find something. It's not a treasure chest. It's a crate. Is it an animal crate? It's a pig crate. Are there pigs on the island? Yes, there are. Let's catch a pig. 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 Piggy. Piggy, piggy, piggy. Oh, it's, a, it's a right trigger to pick up a pig. Get a pig. Get a pig. Get pig. Right trigger to pick up the pick up the pig. I'm pressing right trigger. Yes, I have a pig. Oh, and there's the skellies. I have a pig. I have a pig. You're right, Mega Cheesecake. Mega Cheesecake is obsessed with pigs. Whenever I play Sea of Thieves with him, it's kind of all he wants to do, right? Is just get a pig. A shipped pig. Now, I can't let him out of the pig. Out of the crate. <laughs> Because all I can do now is pick up the crate or put the crate down, right? So the reason you pick up pigs is for the Merchant Alliance. Sometimes they send you on missions to find certain pigs that people want to buy. Now, there's a couple of things about pigs. I believe you have to feed them. That's important because they will die of starvation. And what's quite funny is that <laughs> I, uh, I, once, I once... I had a pig on my ship here and I also picked up a snake with it in a snake basket. Because I was doing a Merchant Alliance voyage. Um, and I put, stupidly, put the snake basket about here. Next to the pig. And the snakes shoot venom. So I went off on the island to do some stuff. I came back and I was like, where's my pig? My pig's gone. There was a... Stop it. There was, a, there was an empty pig crate. But it just had a pork chop in it. Because the snake had killed the pig. So that was very sad. Very sad indeed. But the pig is there, so I, but I do need to feed him, but maybe not all the time, just like when he gets hungry, I guess. I don't know how you know when he gets hungry. Maybe he... Um, I think maybe they um, uh, squeal lots. I don't know. We'll find out. Hey, hey, pig. There's loads of pigs. This is Pig Island. Pig Island. They're all over it. Oh, this is the one with the little spa. This is Spa Island as I call it. This is cool. I don't know what this is for, but look here. It's a little, a little oasis of calm. Those skellies are all over me today. If this was in Game of Thrones, this is where um, Jon Snow and Ygritte would come in their, in their time off. They went into that really cold pool, didn't they? Well, the pool was warm, but they were in the, in the frozen north. But I think they would like it more in here. This is nice in here. Oh, except when the skellies are shooting you. Go away! Yeah, I hope that hurt. No. Alright. The reason they get me is I'm just staying in one place for too long. It's my own fault. Eat. Alright. Mega Cheesecake, do you know how, um, how I know if the pig's hungry? Come on, you're the pig expert. If you don't know, then uh, I just heard a cannon shot. Just heard a cannon shot. Let's just get back on my ship to have a look. Charlie B, that is a good question. You would have no idea from watching me muck about at the moment. Um, this is a gold hoarders mission. So uh, it's a vault voyage so what you basically do is you use a golden wayfinder which is um this thing here you use this thing to find pieces of a map once you've got them all the pieces of a map together it will show you an island and where to go you then go to that island i think you find a key and then you find a vault and you get into the vault and you have a certain amount of time to get all the treasure out before the vault door closes all right 
This is where we're supposed to be digging. Come on, let's do it. Leeches, I don't want leeches. Jean Valjean, get out the way. There it is. Okay, I can hear skellies though. Yes, pick up torn match parchment. parchment. Go, 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 go. Just get the heck out of here. Too many skellies. Let's practice the famous sword lunge that all the cool streamers can do and I seem to have struggle with. Let's try it. Okay, like this and then and then jump. Yay! And then miss the ladder and sail off into the ocean. Yay! Yeah, it's changed a lot, Charlie B. A lot. Just, just. I mean, I never played it at the beginning, but, but reading the forums, you know, one of the main complaints at the beginning was there just wasn't enough to do. But there's a lot of stuff now. Still loads that I haven't done. Um, okay, so we now have a map parchment cheesecake. I'm going to bat. Oh, there we go. We're lucky. Look at that. Okay. We've got two more map pieces to get to complete the map, but we don't need to because we now have enough of the island to recognise it on the map down below. Um, and we have an X. We have the X. So we know where we're looking to get the key for the vault. Um, <laughs> so that should be good. He, Mega Cheesecake, if you were going to start putting your dodgy jokes in my chat, I'm going to have to block you. Gets disgruntled. Hey, pig, are you happy or are you hungry? Would you do anything if I play music at you? <laughs> Cannot feed pink and black spotted pig with sailor banjo. I'm pleased that Rare put in a message about that because I would have struggled. I, okay, it, I now know that I can't do that. Thank you, Rare. That's good. But what about the drum? Can't feed the pig with the sailor drum. Doesn't even dance. We should call the pig Davy. What an interesting choice of name, Charlie B. All right, I'm just going to see if I can feed him. Feed him with a pomegranate. Okay. Okay, well, I mean, that was less exciting than I was expecting, but at least he's not going to be hungry. Okay. All right, chaps, it's time to go to the final island. Come on, how long have I got? I've got 50 minutes left. Can I do it in within 50 minutes? Bet I flipping can't. I bet I can't. Right, let's have a look. So we've got a kind of um, like big sort of C sh uh, shaped kind of backward C mouth shaped. What's the picture? Oh, is that your that's your um, is that your Assassin's Creed game, Charlie B? The picture you've just posted. I can see like a little a little um. Is it Ivor? I think it might be. Um, right, I need to find this island. Let's have a look. So we are now, if, you know, if I knew the game more, so a lot of players would just be able to tell where this island is straight away. Uh, I don't think it's that one. Let's have another look. No, it's much more of an open mouth kind of thing going on. Look, see, this is this is how pets can be annoying. I'm trying to read the map by pressing X, but X means pick up Jean Valjean. So then Jean Valjean is getting in my way. I'm going to punish you. I'm going to put you in a cage. Right, and then I'm going to close it. Okay, I feel bad now. I feel bad now, Jean Valjean, but you're staying there for a moment. All right, let's find this uh, blinking island so we can get a voyage done. Get a voyage done. Right. Ooh, could it be Crook's Hollow? I think it's Crook's Hollow. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's Crook's Hollow, isn't it? And it's right by the dock. The square. Nice. All right. Beep. Let's zoom way out. How close are we? We are very, very close, and we're pointing towards it. This couldn't be better, ladies and gents. This is good. This is going to expedite the conclusion of the voyage. To use big words. All right, so we need to. We are quite close to this island, though, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, stop shooting at me, Skelly. Oh, in WhatsApp, Charlie B. I can't look at my phone as well, Charlie B. I've, there's too much to cope with. 
too much to cope with. Looking at phones, looking at Twitch chat, trying to actually play the game to some kind of standard. Um, okay, where are we going? See, I'm not I'm not concentrating. Oh, just around to the left. That's it's that one right there. Crook's Hollow. Nice. Let's get full sails. Can we get the wind into it? Oh, not by the time we turn. Let's have a look. Okay, what, what's the wind doing? No, it's not worth it. We're not going to catch that. So a sloop, um, it functions differently against the wind to all the other ships. The ships generally have different sail positions for going the fastest when you're sailing into or against the wind. So the sloop, you just keep them straight like this. Just keep them straight. If we were on a brig, then we would we would move the sails all the way to the side. That that would mean that it would go fastest against the wind. But a sloop is different. It just goes like this. And against the wind, the sloop is the fastest ship in the game. So you have that advantage because you are on your own. Um, you know that you can outrun any other ship. You may not last long against it fighting, but you know that if you head into the wind, set your sails straight, you will outrun any brig or galleon. So that's a nice little fallback if you need to run. The trouble is if they then follow you across the map for two hours. But there are ways you can get round of that as well. So into hour three of my first live stream. <laughs> Um, it's been a lot of fun. It's a bizarre experience, I have to say, but it has been a lot of fun. Stop it. Okay, skellies are shooting at me from Crook's Hollow. If I swing round, hopefully I'll get out of their cannon aim and then we might be okay. Oof. But don't steer into the island because that has consequences too. Oh, that hit me. Or it could be the island. Either way. I'll probably need to patch that. Pretty, hey? Okay. Okay, let's just pause here for a second. So I can sort my ship out. See that artwork on the that's all in the on the on the novel as well. That's the um, creatures or people that lived here before it was discovered by us earthbound humans. There's a whole thing about the kind of the ancients that used to live here. It's nice. It's some good stuff. Um, right, two things I need to do. Check my ship, which is ever so slightly full of water. We can get rid of some of that. Oh, that's good. And then we have... Is that a hull to patch? Yes, it is. They don't always chuck out water, especially obviously the ones higher up the ship. So sometimes it's very easy to miss. There'll be one little black hole, but you can't, um, but there's no water coming out. So it's quite hard to tell sometimes. <clears throat> this is a pretty island. Okay, let's see where we are. Yeah, we're on the wrong side of it. Okay, I'm going to carry on going around. Head over the other side. Just so I'm nearest where we need to be. Any treasure we can see? There's another rowboat, but we already got one of those. There's a snake that kills pigs. I just heard the pig. Are you hungry? You need more food? Hold on, Davy. There you go. Alright, stop moaning. Sleeps are really good. Cheesecake and I have tried to sleep and a brig. The brig, I mean, the brig has its advantages, of course. But I just like moving around the small ship and, like, like Cheesecake says, yeah, the manoeuvrability is just great. That's why I crash into so many islands, because the manoeuvrability is just so good. There's a ship over there, just going to see if it's anything to worry about. And that is a player ship, a player brig, sailing very, very fast. Hmm. One to keep an eye on. So, thank you, Charlie B. Love you to jump on at some point. I'll oh, get out of it. The skellies have got it in for me tonight. 
Where's that ship? So I tend to be a bit of a um, a pacifist captain. <laughs> um, I, I am very much um, make friends first, shoot second. Which is, you know, I'm well aware it's probably the worst way to play this game. It needs to be the other way around. Shoot first, ask questions afterwards. Um, but I, I do really enjoy it. I like mucking around on the voice and, and trying to make friends and talk to people and see where they're from. And sometimes, more often than not, it really works. And it's it's worked well and I've had some good chats. But um, yeah, it's, it's not really the way to play it. You, you need to assume everyone is out to get you. Um, if a ship is coming close to you, you load that cannon. And if you want to, you just take a shot. You know, it's a warning shot across its bow, whatever. But uh, that's the way you have to play. If you want to play it seriously and you don't want to lose your ship. Also, don't get close to these islands. When they're shooting cannonballs at you. Should have stayed where I was around the other side. I was a bit safer then. <laughs> you can drive, Charlie B. Oh, I don't know why you need to. I'm quite obviously quite a... <laughs> I mean, I don't have to say anything, do I? The string speaks for itself. I'm quite obviously a very competent driver. Right. Let's get away from here. Let's check the ship. I think we may be in trouble. Let's check the ship. Yeah, we're in trouble. All right, let's just bail, and then we're going to patch as quickly as we can. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, look at all the holes. Like Swiss cheese. Okay, patch, 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 patch. Patch, patch, patch. Have I turned us around so we're going to hit the island? No, we're okay, we're okay. Let's go. Five holes. Repair, repair, repair. Why are you not repairing? Go, 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 go. <laughs> Honestly, Charlie, if, Charlie B, if you're going to do the driving, mate, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. I was going to say it's the only thing I'm good at. Proved myself wrong there. Look at the bucket work, though. I mean, you're not going to get any finer bucket work than that. Right, where the heck are we? Where's that island? Is that it over there? Is that the one we were at? Goodness sake. Should we do a little uh, little U-turn? I like doing a U-turn. So you swing it around, you drop the anchor, and then you immediately raise the anchor back up. So you're doing a nice nice sharp turn to get... I often do this against ships that are following me. Just because I get bored of them following me. If I can't outrun them, it's like, well, I've either got to scuttle the ship and sink it and start again, or I can just take them on. Yeah, I may sink but at least you know I can give them a fight so doing the little uh, anchor turn is quite fun because they, they don't always expect it so you just turn around really quickly and if you still got your sails down like that you can set off in a good direction straight away yeah killing with kindness it's it's done as proud sometimes hasn't it cheesecake um, other times has not but uh, it's, it's, it's my preferred approach I prefer making friends than enemies see your friends Just need to find a place now on this island um, where I can stop without being in uh, in range of the cannons. <sighs> See what I mean? Stopping at an island has taken me 10 minutes so far. Right, is this a good place? This is where we stopped before, wasn't it, I think? Yeah. Come on, there we go. Okay. I think this could be a safe place. All right. Let's get it done. All right, we're good. Have I got enough food? Nope. Let's get some food. Thank you so much, Charlie B. Lovely to have you along. I really appreciate it. I'll be watching your stream again soon at some point. All right. I'm on, my friends. Let's get it done. Come on. We ain't got long. It's taken long enough already. 
Right, let's look at this map. Oh, there's a skeleton. Oh, what a surprise. Oh, bloody hell. Right, come on. Let's get over here. All right. Okay. Let's look at this map now. Oh, uh, no, not that way. So that is the... Oh, come on. I'm just trying to read a map. Just trying to read a map. Just trying to read a map. Nope. He got me then. I tried to lunge and I, the button didn't work. So he lunged at me instead. I gave him so much opportunity there. It was ridiculous. That's what I meant to do. And again. Nope, you're not doing it. Okay, what part of the island are we on? No, not this one. Uh, ha, ha. Okay, that's the east of the island over there. Right. See, that one, this is why I'm thinking these guys are tougher than they were before. I, re I think... I have a feeling rare... I think there were notes somewhere in the patch notes, in the release notes for this season, that they buffed the skellies a little bit. Because I remember you could one-shot kill the skellies with a lunge, and none of that seems to be working at the moment. Okay, all is quiet. All is quiet. Let's go. Quests. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. All right. Okay, so... We've got the jet... Of course, it's right by the jetty, isn't it? There's a jetty sticking out, right? So maybe I can cut through... Let's let's cut through this cave. Probably bring us out at another place. Oh! There's some treasure. Get out of it. Get out! No. There's my ship. Okay, I'm going to bung that on here for now. Just there so I can see it later when I come back to my ship. Right, let's see. One shot. No. Two shots. Okay. Took a while though. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Okay, let's just... Oh, I think I remember this part of the island. Yeah, okay. This is where we are. Here's the jetty. Here is the jetty. Cheesecake still with me, hanging on in there. What a friend he is. Okay. Uh, so it's literally, okay, so I think it's probably. So it's either going to be up. It's directly opposite the jetty. It's going to be up in those trees or in the bushes down here, I think. So we can try this. Okay, let's try and dig something in here. I can't even remember what I'm looking for. Is it a key to the vault? It's not earthworms. I think it's some sort of... Yeah, I think maybe it's the totem to the vault. Something like that. But I'm... I'm thinking maybe... Oh, uh, chickens. Chickens as well. I wonder if the pig's dead yet. I forgot about the pig. Oh, can I reload my gun there? I think I can. Dangerous. All right, I think maybe it's up there. It would make more sense. I need to go up there. Let's go. Get up, get up, get up, get up on top of the... Duh, duh, duh. What we got here? Another pig cray. They want us to have these pigs today. Skellies and pigs is what I should call the this um, uh, stream. Skellies and pigs. Get out of it, snake. If you yell at the animals and say, get out of it, I find that it works, which is why I do it. It's another pro stream tip for you. I'm being very generous with my pro stream tips. I hope you're all um, getting something out of it. Okay, let's find... All right, so we're opposite the dock. We're up here. This looks like a prime area for something to be buried. Come on. Get it done, get it done. Yes! Buried treasure found. Which of course spawns a million skeletons. So let's do some skelly fighting. Oh, they've got, look, they've got little headbands. Nice. Don't. Okay, is that good? Is that what we're doing? What we got? Have a banana. 
voyage complete? I don't know how the voyage is complete. I have no idea how I've completed this voyage. I haven't even dug up this chest yet, but apparently the voyage is complete. Well, let's just see what's going on. I remember why. I remember why. Because this voyage... The aim of the voyage for the Gold Hoarders is simply to find this. Okay, to find this treasure, right? So I'm going to take the gold. 335. Um, but then, so it's to find the treasure chest, isn't it? And then I think maybe it's to take this back to them. Or you can choose to do the vault. Hmm. I wonder what to do. We've got half an hour left. It's perfect timing. Let's do this vault. It is called the Crescent Island Key. There is a clue in the title as to where we need to go next. Where we need to go next is my ship. Hey, chicken. I might just grab some uh, more food. I think I've got very little. Okay. Keg. Dangerous. I'm looking forward to that keg stream, though. That should be good. That should be a lot of fun. Stay there, snakey. Get away. I think I've got skellies following me. Yeah. Can't be bothered to retaliate now. Just want to get back to my ship. All right. I've gone the wrong way. I wasn't looking. I was looking at the other stuff going on. Come on, come on. Just bring me out by my ship, yeah? Alright. I'm going round, I'm going round. Because that's how I find my ship. We'll just have a little swim. Never got round to fishing, never did that in this stream. That could be another stream. Not a whole stream of fishing, that would be crazy. But, uh... Some fishing in another stream. So I don't get to play games very much. Um, which does kind of affect the type of game one can play. As For those of you who know me, I am... Um, a father of three, which can be quite challenging sometimes. Um, you don't get a lot of free time. Obviously, you do get evenings to yourself because the children go to bed eventually. But you're often kind of exhausted and you can't actually even play a game. You, you know, you just kind of collapse. So I, like many other dads around here, just kind of get the odd moment to play games. Or maybe an evening if you're lucky. Oh yeah, that's over there, isn't it? Um... So, you know, that often dictates what kind of games you play. So, you know, I was playing The Witcher for a long time. Um, it's just so big. I, I, I got quite far, but I thought I got quite far. And then I realised that I was about a third of the way through and thought, I'm just never going to get there. I, so I can't, I'm try, I now try to avoid the, the big sprawling RPGs as much as I love them. I can't put in the time. Um... Stardew Valley was a nice little one. That's I still play that occasionally. That's a nice little relaxing game that you can just pick up for 20 minutes. This game, though, as you can see, takes a long time to get stuff done. Um, but you haven't got a million quests. You haven't got a ton of storyline like something like The Witcher to get through. So you can just come on here and have a bit of a muck around, really. Oh, so close, and of course, now the ship's in the wrong place. As great as the harpoon is, I sometimes kind of think, just swim and pick it up, which is now what I'm thinking. Okay, I nudge that up just at the last moment. Come here, come here, chest. I'm here. Right, this is the last go, then I'm coming to get you with my bare hands. Stupid chest! Deliberately evading me. Right, come on. Because we've got to get to Crescent Isle. And what we got? 25 minutes to do it. Come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Crescent Isle, Crescent Isle. Full, sp full steam ahead. Jean Valjean, drop the sails. Never does it when I ask. <sighs> Alright. Red chest on board. 
Crescent Isle, where are you? Where are you? Crescent Isle. Don't be ages away, please. So I haven't got the time. Far too busy. It's looking like it's going to be ages away, isn't it? Okay, I may have to call up my trusty app because sometimes I can spend a good five minutes just staring at this thing, trying to find a piffly little island. All right, come on. Crescent Island, Crescent Island, Crescent Island. Right, okay, I'm searching for it. I'm searching on my uh, on my app and then it will give me the um, coordinates. Uh, okay, we are looking at um, B9. Okay, so I'm there. Oh, what? Yes, of course. Of course it's over the other side of the map. Why wouldn't it be? Oh, man. Okay. Okay, we're going northwest, full steam ahead. I bet the, uh, I bet the wind's going to be against us as well. That'll be fun. Northwest. All right, keep going around, keep going around. Oh, I don't know, actually. The wind might be in our favor once we get around there b9 thank you cheesecake i didn't see that you probably got there before me oh i said northwest didn't i northwest that's another thing i often get wrong my compass points I often get those kind of mucked up let's go let's go let's go Northwest. Now, what's the wind doing? Ah! I'll give it a try. I don't think it's going to work. I'll try and catch it. Yes! All right. Those, uh, the skellies are shooting at me again. Look at them. They never quit. They never quit. Northwest. Okay, so. This is what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Cheesecake. You may not be on the stream, but you're still my uh, my co-pilot, right? <laughs> so this is what's going to happen. We're get going to gonna get to Crescent Island. Um, we're going to take the key that I found. We're going to find the vault. Which I think there's an inscription on the key that gives us a... I can't remember. We'll worry about it when we get there. Going to go to Crescent Island, find the vault. We get into the vault, get as much treasure out as we can before the vault closes. Whew. Okay, we can do this. There's a big thing in front of us. Coming out of the fog. Okay, let's move. It's a fort. Forts look scary. You don't need to worry about them, though. Fort of the Damned. You don't need to worry about them, though. And this, this, there's the big skull in the sky floating above them. If that is the case, then they are manned or skellied and stuff is going on there. A lot of stuff. And it will attract a lot of other ships as well. If there's, no, if there's no skull above, it's just a dead island, as that one is there. Nothing's actually going on there. It's quite a good place to find gunpowder kegs, if you if you need them. I'll remember that for my keg stream. It's a good place to go. See how my health bar is up in the bottom left? Because I'm a tiny, tiny bit down on my health. That really annoys me, because it's like, well, I want to eat something now, just to make that go away. But is, is it worth wasting a coconut? It's absolutely not. Have I got any bananas? I've got no bananas. Come on, I thought I'd pick some bananas up. Let's check down here. Whoa. I have some bananas. I'll eat a banana. Alright. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Still heading northwest, still at full speed, so all is good so far. I haven't been checking the horizon much, just been talking. Always be checking. Always be checking. Always. Be checking. That island over there, that one there, is an outpost. It is the Sea Dogs outpost, I believe. You won't find it on the map. If I went ran downstairs and looked at the map, there, there is no island marked on there. The Sea Dogs are... Now, I think they are to do with Arena. Arena is the... Um, is the uh, the part of the game where you can go in and just kind of do battle ship to ship and get points and stuff. So it's not a not story led thing like we're doing here. 
All right, slightly more to the west, just slightly. Um, so yeah, so that is their kind of hideaway thing. But it is an outpost. You can still stop there um, and uh, buy stuff and turn stuff in. I think cheesecake and I got very drunk there in one of our first sessions. I seem to remember just at the end of the session we just finished. And we were still finding the drunk animation hilarious. Well, it is still hilarious. <laughs> but it was um, it was quite a nice place to go. It's all built around a, a spire, uh, as you can see back there, maybe. Yeah, there. So there's some really high up platforms and stuff. Um, it's pretty cool. Nice place. What's this? Reaper's Hideout. Reaper's Hideout, where you go to turn in all the Reaper stuff. Yeah, we don't want to mess with the Reaper's Hideout. Oh, see. West again. I'll turn too much west. Let's go for it. This way. Okay, what time we got? 20 minutes left. 20 minutes left of the stream. I guess in theory, if I'm in the middle of something, I can... I mean, hey, it's my stream. I can carry on the stream as long as I want, right? But I don't want to carry it on much later than 11, because, you know, I've got stuff to do, like sleep. And get good sleep before children wake me up really early in the morning. So we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Another thing I like about this game is all the downtime. Yeah, because this is, this is the time, especially when you're playing with a crew, this is the time where you will start chatting about real life and seeing how each other, seeing how you are, and it's just nice. There's, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of you travelling across the open ocean, I guess, in, you know, in real life that's when you're going to start chatting to people, right? But it's, um, it's nice that you have those moments. If we were playing Overwatch or something and we were in a little team, there's going to be very little chatting, isn't there? Just not gonna get, not gonna get the chance. So I, I like, I like the fact that you get that in this game. We have still got a long way to go. Now I have a theory about um, when I play Sea of Thieves. Is that a ship? Not that I saw one. Uh, where was it? I should really just get in my crow's nest. Um, there is an ongoing argument that I'm sure you will all be aware of between PC players and console players about all sorts of games, what is better, etc, etc, etc. I've always played on console just because I had the idea of getting into PC peripherals and all that stuff just kind of scared me and I wasn't that interested. I wanted a, a games console I could plug in and play without having to worry about that stuff. Um, but obviously, you know, the, the argument raises on. I mean, basically, it's, it's different for different people. Different people like different things. Um, but the argument rages on with regards to Sea of Thieves as well. Because as with a lot of games, oh, what am I... Look, where am I going? You have got to stay on this compass. We've got to go around this island now. Well, actually, can I... Have we got enough space to turn in front of it? Yeah. Um... You've got to... Yeah, yeah, it is. No, no, it's no, it's not. It's fine. Fine, Charlie. Uh, cheesecake. <laughs> Lots of people... Yeah, so so people argue that um, PC players have an advantage uh, with using keyboard and mouse because they can be quicker, their accuracy can be better because they can do smaller movements with the mouse than you can do with the controller. You know, I'm sure this argument rages on for lots and lots of different multiplayer games. Um... I don't know. I've not played this with a PC. All I can say, though, is that, um... When I have watched the really good streamers online, um, obviously they are all playing on PC and I do notice a noticeable difference. Not because they're really, really good at the game. That is obvious, but just their movements, um, the way they sword fight, it is an absolute blur. You can't even see what's happening. And they do this kind of wiggly aim thing, um, turning around faster. Just I, There is a difference. I'm, I'm sure there is. And there must be a difference because that is why Rare gave the players the opportunity to um, uh, select Xbox only servers if you want them. So you can, it's not guaranteed, but you can select a preference. You can say, I would rather play with people just on Xbox, not PC players. That is what I generally do when I'm playing solo um, because I would just rather that be the case, more of a level playing field, I suppose. Um, 
when I play with the other guys, they're on PC, so we, we stick to a PC server. But I, I generally feel that I think maybe the PC servers are just fuller. There's more, more players on PC. I don't know, but it's, it's always pretty quiet. Whenever I play Xbox on my own, um, uh, Xbox server on my own, I so rarely see other ships. As has been demonstrated by my stream this evening. I mean, there was one right at the beginning that didn't want to have anything to do with me. But other than that, I haven't seen any other ships, have we? Other than, the, you know, the skelly galleons and stuff. So, I don't know, just a theory. But I always feel when I switch over to that prefer Xbox, I always kind of think it's going to be quiet. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. 15 minutes left. I haven't even used my special Be Right Back screen. I should do that right now. I'm not going to go anywhere, but, you know, I just need to do these things to try them out. I'll be right back. And I'm back. That was a nice little break. So professional. So, so professional. All right. I haven't mentioned the music as well. I mean, the music is just fantastic in this game. A lot of it is on Spotify. They have a, um, a weird thing on Spotify, though. They don't, as far as I could tell, straight past this, past this island, straight on. As far as I could, they don't have, like, a album of the soundtrack right you just play the whole thing it seems to be they release tracks singly and then they're all sort of spread over the place and you have to collect them all together or, or something it was a bit strange so it wasn't quite as easy as i'd hoped when i started listening to the music um but it's really good really really lovely music good mix and you get a lot of musical cues as well in this game when stuff's about to happen when the meg starts to attack the music changes like this. You get a little Golden Sands outpost we're going past, so it gives you a little um, musical cue. When the Kraken appears, oh man, this is choppy sea. Makes you feel a bit sick on the old, uh, there you go, look. Not ships, trees. Classic rare design. I should have looked, I should have already looked at the outpost here to check if there was a ship there. Foolhardy mistake that was, there could have been one right there. But we're okay. It's quiet on the seas this evening. Beautiful day, though. Apart from that storm that's forming. We won't talk about that. Okay. Slide to the left, then we're there. Right, can I look at this? I need to look at this key, right? Because I think it's going to tell me stuff. Hold on. Uh, did I put the key on the ship? I stupidly thought it had kind of gone into my inventory. But of course, it doesn't. It is an item that you hold... And I think what I've done is I've dropped it. Yeah, I think I, I think I dropped it back on the island. I when I pressed a button when I was just running along, maybe went to pick something else up. I think I dropped the key, which means I, I can't carry on with the voyage now. Oh, just what's that? That's just going to be a different thing, isn't it? Curses, curses, curses. I'm such an idiot. That's going to be fun for me to rewind my stream later and see the exact moment when I dropped the key on the island. Yeah, that'll be really fun. I'll, I'll look forward to looking at that. Ah, oh, really? I don't know, Cheesecake. I think you have to laugh, right? You have to laugh. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Okay. Oh, hi, pig. 
Oh. Okay. So this is... Oh, there's the pig. This evening just gets worse and worse. I dropped the key. I can't complete the voyage. I forgot to feed the pig. Oh, cheesecake. I'm so sorry, my friend. What a disaster. Sanctuary outpost. We're heading to the outpost, chaps. To end the evening. I did not kill Davy. Davy died of his own accord, actually. I think you'll find. I think he just didn't eat all the food I gave him. There's a rock. Ah, oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, pig dead. Voyage failed. Oh no, and I actually I completed the voyage, didn't I? I said that I completed the voyage. Um, just ever so slightly left, and then we're there. Okay, can't even hand a pig into the Merchant Alliance. Let's go. Come on. Got a boat to catch. I think it's that one right over there. Let's go, 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 go. Yeah, I'm sorry about the pig, mate. Bad karma, that was. That's Sanctuary Outpost, right? Is that a ship at Sanctuary Outpost? Yep. We have a ship at Sanctuary Outpost. They are doing Order of Souls Emissary. The reason I know that is because if you heard that little jingle jangle when I looked at it, I think if they, if they're doing an emissary, then it plays the little theme tune for the um, faction that they're doing it for. Which I think that was the Order of Souls. Try it again. It's not going to do it again now. Okay, so what have we got for my grand stream? We have an empty pig crate. We have a marauder's chest. Is that it? Did we turn everything else in? <laughs> ah. So that entire gold hoarder voyage. I've come out with an, a dead pig in and in a, in a crate and a chest. Shocking. All right. Now... What do we do here? I want to turn in. I don't have really have time. I don't want to go sailing around the whole island and stuff. So, whew. let's just stop for now. Do you think they can hear me if I uh, if I did my megaphone? I'll give it a go. All right. Hello, hello, fellow pirates. I mean no harm. I'm just waiting to turn in. I mean no harm. Do you have a microphone? I'm hoping you can hear me. Unsure. See, again, this is where I'm slightly um, confused with my audio settings as well because I've set all the chat to come through speakers rather than headset. Speakers essentially meaning through the HDMI cable and onto my stream, right? So if anyone started to talk to me, it would be you could hear it on my stream. That's what I realised I had to do. Um, but has that switched it off of headset? There was no speaker and headset option. It was just speaker or headset. So obviously I'm hearing the game, the sound effects but I don't know if I can hear any chat because I haven't met anyone <laughs> that's actually spoken to me yet. Do you know what I'm going to do? I haven't got much to lose. I don't really care about turning this stuff in. I'm just going to I'm going to get closer to this side of the island. And if I if I come in at this side, it should be fairly obvious to those guys that I'm not actually trying to get into a position where I can um sink them. I come in peace. I come in peace. I am friendly. Just turning in. I mean no harm. Arr. I had to add that for... Just in case they only speak pirate. Alright. 
we are nearly done for the evening. Be nice if we can go and talk to these guys. I'm going to just leave my shit. Let's take a... I'll take a... Oh, we crashed into the dock, but that's that's all cool. That's what I wanted to do. Let's go and see. I'm going to try and turn this in. Of course, they may just snipe me and uh, take my treasure. That's fine. I'm prepared for that. Okay, if I take out... If I take out my, uh, my tanker, just in case they see me. They know that I'm trying to be friendly. Of course, they may have abandoned their ship. Oh, there, there he is. Hello! Can you hear me? Greetings, fellow pirate. Excellent. If you, I don't know if you have a microphone. If you're talking to me, I can't hear you, but it could be my settings. Okay. He's not that talkative, but that's okay. He might not have a mic. I'll leave you in peace. Farewell. Take care. It's been a pleasure, an honour. Good luck on your uh, Gold Hoarder's Emissary Voyage. Ah, <laughs> oh, bless him. A nice way to finish the stream. He's off. There we go, you see? A nice little friendly dance. A last hurrah. It doesn't always have to end in violence, although it quite often does. Alright, let's just turn this stuff in. Then I can put up my thank you for watching screen because I'm a pro now, everyone. Oh yes. I'm not a newbie anymore. I've done my first live stream. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was slightly more challenging than I thought it was going to be. But I have some lovely friends who were with me in the chat and that really helped. So thank you very much to everyone that joined. Oh, I've already handed the chest in and that was it. Oh, so I just got a pig crate. <laughs> I just keep thinking I've got more treasure than I've got. No, I haven't. Okay. Pig crate. I reckon I can sell it to the Merchants Alliance. Let's try that. So, next week, for my next stream, I'll probably do more of the same. Still on the beginner's theme, doing one of the voyages, trying to get one done, and uh, we'll see what happens. And then, you know, after that, I'll maybe start trying to do some theme streams. Who knows? The world is my oyster at this point. Come on, Mr. Slow Pirate. This is the most exciting, this is the most exciting part now of the entire stream. If you've just joined, then this is it. I'm selling a pig crate. Is she going to buy it? Fine. You don't have to buy it. I'm just going to stick it on your foot. There we go. Trader Molly. Let's see what she sounds like. Good day. She's quite officious. Mm. Hmm. Our business is done. Okay. Fair enough. Excellent. Right. Now, now, what do I need to do? I don't take the gold hoarders thing down because... um. That, that, I lost that right at the beginning. I think we're done. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a joy playing. I've really enjoyed streaming. Um, and uh, hey, it's a first. I've done it. So let me give myself a little cheer. Hooray! Thank you, Cheesecake. Stay with me the entire time. You're an absolute legend. And to all my other friends who joined me. Take care, everyone. And I will see you on the next stream. Thank you very much. See you again.